So at mm -hmm. 6 o'clock, I'd like to open the January 14th Woodbury Rock Select Board meeting. And first on the agenda are is adjustments to the agenda. Michael or I have Brian? one. Um, there's a, a grant application that um, I was contacted by uh, somebody from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Um, they would like to write a grant for the town of Woodbury for their full design of the five priority sites from that King um, Kingsbury Branch yeah. technical plan. Um, it's just barely getting put together, but I just want to, you know, um, they'll need a letter of support, and I wanted to explain a little bit more about it, um, just so that we're, everybody's okay with going ahead with it. Um, so you're going to wrap meet with us for that, or just send us a letter? Uh, um, Pam said that she could send a letter, a suggested letter of support <coughs> that we could tweak, um, and, uh, if we're if we're interested in pursuing the project. so I'm basically I have a little bit of information that I just wanted to share um, and see if we're we're interested. Well, we could do that since uh, yeah, we put on fiber and we could stick it right in that spot. Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay. And that's all I have to. Um, hey, Susan. Brian, do you have any nope. adjustments? Laura, would that little pull out to surface? Yes. So next up on the agenda is public comment. And Susan Martin just arrived. Susan, are you a member of the public or are you in your auditing? Well, well neither one will cost the town anything. <laughs> <laughs> I guess both. Do you have any public comment then? No. no, I just uh, want to let you all know that you're doing a good job. Appreciate your help. I do have some um, documents concerning the hazard mitigation plan that I'd like to ask maybe you, Skip, what I should do with it. It's the um, my hours okay, uh, yeah. that I put I in, does. so I'll just give this to you, and we can talk about it at another time. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I asked for folks to have them to me by I think the twenty second, the twenty first. No, uh, oh. January. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, now that I was. Because I'll, you know, even though our draft. Yeah. Uh, Disaster mitigation plan is in FEMA's hands. Right. Who knows now with the uh, government shutdown how long they're going to take to review it and get any changes back to us. Mm -hmm. And also, who knows how long it's going to take till we receive our grant monies? Because mm -hmm. uh, that has to go through first, I think, Vermont Emergency Management, mm -hmm. then to FEMA to get those funds. Uh -huh. yeah. So I sent an email to Stephanie Smith today. Mm -hmm. Wondering, okay, so what's what's the protocol? How are we going to number one get the grant monies, and if we can get the grant monies, will they come after our plan is finalized, or will they give us the money just when they have a draft? Okay. Right. So, I don't know how right. Yeah. <laughs> just wanted to get it off my book. <laughs> Actually, we're in no hurry because I think we want to put it into the. Uh, Fiscal year 2020 budget. Mm -hmm. So we all know how slowly the wheels of justice and government grind. Okay. No, so no public comment other than a hazard mitigation grant. All right. Next on the agenda is approve the bills to the town. I'd like to introduce a motion to approve the bills to the town that we not seen since December, I want to say, 10th. Mm -hmm. Please pile. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Bills are approved. And we have now meeting minutes to approve from the last two select board meetings. One meeting is December 10th, and these are the final uh, meeting minutes, and I'd like to introduce a motion to approve these meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. Second pass. Yep. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And lastly, for meeting minutes, we have the December 19th select board meeting meeting minutes. 
Uh, I'd like to introduce a motion to approve those meeting minutes as well. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Signature. So Laura, will you post these tomorrow? Okay. You know how to do the electronic signature? The slash S slash. Yeah, but I can scan those right in. Oh, will you? Okay. Pretty tricky. for design for the five priority <laughs> sites. So, so the presentation's not happening? No, he's a car truck. We called about five years ago. So he was stuck. So he'll be joining us on the 28th. So before I ran out of toner, I was able to print out, um, just this is the first kind of, it's still a working, Document. This is kind of a budget for the full design. Um, so this would, um, you know, we had, uh, just to back up a little bit, we had um, the Kingsbury Branch um, Tactical River Basin Plan um, that was done this summer. It's still actually a work in progress. It's not finished yet. And one of the end results was that um, to have a 30% design, which is... Um, have a partial design mm -hmm. done for five priority sites, which we picked out um, during the course of the, the inventory. Um, initially, all five sites were in the village area. Um, however, during the course of the summer, the road crew did the ditching on Valley Lake Road down to the, the school, and that was one of the sites. So that's kind of off the list now. Um, so, But there are still four sites within the village um, that our, our priority sites have done further testing done on those sites. Um, one of them is at the Woodbury School, basically the parking area. Um, the fire department annex is another site. Um, Church Street is des designated as another site. Um, mm -hmm. And the fire station uh, and the post office, that little kind of ditch swale that runs into the Kingsbury branch is another site. Um, did they prioritize those, Michael, or they just lumped them together? Those those are kind of lumped together as, um, they're called one, two, three, four. There is yeah. a number for them, and there's a separate work <coughs> plan um, for each. Um, but they would be um, they would be part of this full design. The, the five, we decided that we would try for the five sites and see. Um, the other site now is the town garage, basically, um, the salt shed, trying to just contain the spilled salt and you know, the erosion running down into the wetland area over the hill and stuff like that. Um, um, so what um, I was contacted by last week by Pam Andrea. She's uh, one of the senior planners for the Regional Planning Commission, and she is putting together a grant um, specifically for the town of Woodbury um, to pay for the full design um, for these five sites. Um, so that would be a professional um, design. Um, it would happen over the course of the coming summer. Um, and it would be uh, basically a 80% um, match or with a town 20% match. So 80, 20, 20% town match. We could go with a 10% mm -hmm. match. Mm -hmm. We have better <coughs> luck in um, uh, getting awarded the grant if we put up the 20%, which we could pretty much do with um, road crew work um, and uh, and then time. Mostly my probably my time working with um, the regional planning commission. So 20. So the bottom line is 54,000. Yeah, that, so the actual amount requested is 48,604 dollars. So a 20% match would be basically. 
at $10,000, $9,720. A 10% match would be right around $5,000 approximately. So, um, so, and the other thing that we need to be aware of is that long term with this grant application, um, they're asking if the town is willing to make a commitment for the operation and management of these, the different mitigation at these different sites. Um, mostly that would mean um, sucking out the sediment that, that uh, collects there. Most of the sites will have some type of collection um, basin. And I don't know much about the technology. It's kind of like a big cement cistern in a way. Um, one of them is actually, I think, more like a septic tank that you know would collect sediment, um, and then eventually you would have to, to um, suck it out, like you know, getting somebody like Hardigan or some kind of sewage disposal. Shovel it out if it stands. Then um, I don't know. I guess it just goes to a. Put a cover into it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> It can't Everything. be that dirty. I mean, no, it's, it's just sediment. You could yeah. probably yeah. take it out with a shovel. I don't know what they would do with it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's and that's what I wanted to just um, you know us to be aware of that. Um, and then you know the implementation of the design, we can pick and choose what we want to do. We don't have to do all these five sites because that that would be pretty mm -hmm. costly. And my, so my thinking is is to focus on. The village sites, you know, like the school parking lot mm -hmm. and the fire department annex um, and maybe Church Street with that, those, you know, that sort of flooding area mm -hmm. that we're, you know, trying to fix anyway. Um, do you have plans for any of these? Well, that's, what, hand, or that's, that's what they're going to do. That's what okay. this would be. Yeah, there are plans. Um, the uh, watershed consultants, the people that did the survey, um, they have a 30% design plan. I had. Um, <coughs> Uh, copies that I shared with the select board back, you know, they're, they're, um, a few months ago, um, and there's nothing really anything newer. They, there will be. Um, they haven't really finished the 30% design yet. Um, that will be finished and will be part of this grant within the next few weeks. I would hope. Just for the design. Okay. But this money is for the work, right? The fifty thousand dollars. It, it's for the full design. It's design basically the no work. Right. Yeah. So you just said Regional Planning Commission was going to. They, pay they're for the work. they're going to be doing some of the work. They're they're basically writing the grant and mm -hmm. overseeing the grant. Um, because so I'm looking at some of the some of the topics here. One is construction and. Bid documents, other expenses. So this is just merely for the design. Yeah. Wow, that's so, pretty expensive little yeah. design stuff. Yeah, so, then, it is. It is. so then when it comes to so this, this, if we apply for this grant, and we say, okay, we're going to go forward. Does this compel the town to do this work? No. In any mm -hmm. no time does, frame or anything like that? It does not. Mm -hmm. no, no requirement for a time frame to do it. And what we would do, of course, is use the full design to apply for a grant to pay for the work. Right. Mm -hmm. And to go up to bid, I'm presuming, on that. Yeah. 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 So we would kind of do this, you know, piecemeal. Um, you know, we. I'm thinking that we could just do the school and the fire department annex because those really are two parts of a single piece. Mm -hmm. The Church Street is somewhat indirectly involved. <coughs> um, and the Church Street part, um, even though it's called Church Street, um, what they're looking at is the um, water flow um, that comes down Church Street, kind of the land up behind Ron Langevin's, um, where there's a small brook there um, in the spring. And then they're also looking at the other side of Route 14, the lower part of the Cabot Road, um, where the, you know, there's road that come, water that comes down Cabot Road, it goes into a catch basin and then runs into Kingsbury Branch. And I don't know what happens on the Church Street side. I think it just runs into, runs into the Kingsbury Branch mm. there. Um, so that's kind of a one piece. That's that's actually a pretty major project sure. in a, of itself. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've been looking at that for a long time. Right. Yeah. And so so the implementation, you know, for me, it would make sense to go after the Woodbury School and the Fire Department annex as one piece, maybe first, um, and whether to to maybe include Church Street because it is just, you know, twenty feet over sure. from, from on the bottom of Valley Lake mm -hmm. Road. 
But we can, you know, we can figure that out in the future. Yeah. Um, but there's there's no commitment to implementation. That this is just for the and full it's design. It's possible that um, if the design was done, that actually some of the work might be simple enough so that the town could do it rather than going out again. It's all pretty bids and all stuff. It's all um, the town could road crew could certainly assist. Um, I think, um, but it probably would be require a contractor. It's kind of. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to call it state of the art, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's it's all sort of new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I don't understand it um, completely myself. I, I, what they would actually do, but um, that's something that, that would be part of the mm -hmm. learning curve. Um, mm -hmm. Would this be something that we would get ready and put it out to the voters at a town meeting type of thing to get approval to do? This? Yeah, we we could. Um, you know. Um, we could also try, sort of like with the hazard mitigation grant, we could apply for a grant um, to do the work, um, and then probably there would be a 25%, 20% match, depending on who the grant was from, and, and we would go before the, the town, like we did with the hazard mitigation. Yeah, this is this wouldn't yeah. happen for two or three years out. Yeah. This, um, yeah, that, I'm sure that would probably be part of the approach. Cause, sure, uh, yeah. It's the, any any of the work done will be expensive. I mean, I agree with you. To fifty thousand dollars just for the design is um, that's a lot of money. It is. Mm -hmm. um, and Michael, you feel confident that you could meet the match requirement um, with the road crew and your time? I think I don't know if we did the twenty percent match. Um, you know, I'm not sure really how much the how much does she have down. She has a ten percent match down. Yeah. For yeah, and that's what she was figuring out at first, thinking that Woodbury, you know, that that, that would be easier for Woodbury to show sure would, and it would be. I agree. Because um, right now it has you down for thirty hours, got fifteen dollars, so that's four hundred and fifty. Yeah, and she didn't know what you know the road crew got per hour, so she you know there's mm. just a fifteen dollar hourly rate, so you know Greg's rate to run the excavator would be. Be higher. Yeah. Um, you need an hourly rate for the machines. And for yeah, we could for the equipment. Yeah, for the machines. Um, so you know the machines and and the road crew time would would increase that amount um, quite a bit. Um, yeah, so, the, uh, so we're already close to. But but would that come into this design phase? Yes, Could there be different test pits um, <coughs> that would need to be done. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, the biggest amount of money is the engineering of this. It's for forty thousand dollars. You see that yeah. Brian? Mm -hmm. Right down here. Contractual. Is that something that regional planning commission yeah. would do the contracting? Like yes, they what the they would do, they would kind of like they have done for the technical basin plan and for the inventory. They would over they would hire the contractor to um, do the uh, design and they would manage you know, work with the contractor, mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, that's income for them too. Mm -hmm. So this is basically a grant that gives them some work um, and, you know, comes up with a full design mm -hmm. um, for the town, <coughs> town of Woodbury. Um, so, you know, it's not like we would get a chunk of money that we would pay out to the contractor. We would basically, mm -hmm. you know, like they did for the local hazard and like they did with the phase two, it took yeah. them, even though it took them like a long, long time to choose a contractor, but that was right. Okay. Yeah, just like yeah, it would okay. be the same so as the phase two the and, and the yeah. local hazard mitigation mm -hmm. plan that we did. Basically, mm -hmm. we we hired them, but they they did originally write the grant. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, mm -hmm. so this would be another. So there's nothing compelling us if we do choose to go with this. Is there any? Agency compelling us to apply for this grant? No. It's just, it's just no. something that. This is, you know, I mean, Pam's aware of the town's, you know, situation or, you know, just the fact that we're a small town that we, these types of things we can't really afford. So, um, you know, she thought that, uh, you know, if Woodbury was willing to go ahead with it, that, um, you know, they would write a grant and try to, to help us find the funding. Uh, you know, otherwise, um, you know, we could try applying for grants for the implementation um, with the 30% design. Um, you know, I haven't even thought of 
asking her if that would be um, a possibility. Um, I'm sorry, but what do you mean by 30% design? Is 30% 30 30 design, design is done? like a, a, a site visit design by folks that are hydrologists, um, but not full-blown hydrological oh, engineers. Okay. Yeah. So the watershed consultants, um, and that's, that's actually the name of the, the contractor that they hired, the people that are doing the survey work have um, enough experience to come up with 30% design, which is basically saying that, you know, this type of this type of work with, with this kind of catch basin kind of thing would solve the problem for mm -hmm. the um, erosion runoff into mm -hmm. the Kingsbury branch, but they don't have the expertise um, to actually do like the engineering like for the um, mm -hmm. Nelson Road culvert that we, you know, the box. They probably have the ex expertise, but they don't have the PEs. <laughs> right. Uh, so, um, is it is would would doing all this work put us in a better position as far as the, um, compliance with all the new uh, clean water? Yes, that's stuff. the whole that's purpose. The whole thing. That's okay. the whole purpose. So it is this. something that will probably have to be done yeah. at some point. Yes, it would, in, in order for us to do the work, we would whether the thirty percent design would hold up for submitting, mm -hmm. you know, um, and applying for for grants um, or not is I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps the engineering cost would go down if the engineer had our 30% design. But he will have a 30, or okay. he, they will have a 30% design. And, um, that's part of the, the survey. That's that's a, okay. a, a byproduct of that. So they would have that well, to work with. If you feel confident, Michael, you can reach the 10% match. Mm -hmm. I would say go forward, especially if we're going to have to do it anyway. Right. I, yeah. I think we can easily meet the 10% match. Yeah. Um, and we probably could get halfway to the 20% match. But um, I know Pam originally thought that the 10% match would be, you know, within the scope of um, of, of our abilities to, sure. to pay. I could ask her, you know, now that she, I just shared with her the, you know, Greg's hourly rate, um, and also, um, you know, I pointed out to her the the, um, the rate schedule that she can look at for um, the equipment that would be used. Mm -hmm. Probably would be one of the ten wheelers and the excavator. Um, so she would have some different figures for us. You know, I could try to have other figures. Um, she could probably have more complete figures here in this budget for us to look at and whether I don't she didn't give me a deadline for when this needs to be in but if it was within the scope of our next select board meeting I could have better figures for her okay uh, I can ask her that tomorrow and um, does she have a letter queued up that she would like us she to has a, um, she has a letter I assume that she does yes okay. Um, she could send that to us. And, um, yeah, that would be good to take a look at. Okay. So what I could do is just call her again tomorrow, tell her that we're definitely interested, we're, we're unsure of which match to go with, um, and could get a sense from her of what, um, with the new um, figures that she has for the Woodbury Road Crew, um, whether that would be, you know, above the 10% match, close to the 20% match, um, and you know we'll go with the the match that we're closest to. Yeah, I think. Okay, because you said it, that you felt it would be easier if we went with a twenty percent match. The twenty percent match would show a bigger commitment from the town, which would be, you know, in our favor when the different grant applications are considered okay. um, by whoever. I don't even know who this grant is with. Um, you know, the same with the. Uh, you know, commitment to the operation mm -hmm. and management of the... Sure, yeah. Well, we right. can commit to that. Yeah, yeah. certainly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so let me try to find out a little bit mm -hmm. more about, you know, what her new figures were. Because I literally just gave those to her this afternoon, okay. you know, maybe a couple hours before yeah. our meeting. Um, so she could punch those in um, pretty quickly and... Um, and have some new figures on that, and can see how how it, you know, how it matches up with the 10% match and the 20% match. Okay. So we would not have to go out for 
we would not have to write an RFP no, to the, secure the, an engineer. The regional Planning this. Commission will do all that. Okay. Yeah. And you great. said they've already got someone that they've chosen to? I don't know if they do they, or not. If they, you mean they've got somebody for the 30%? Yeah, the 30 percent is part of the survey that was done this summer. That <coughs> oh, that's done. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's mm -hmm. the what do they call it? Um, when, not scope of work, but there's something deliverables. That's yeah, the term. Yeah. Those that's mm -hmm. part of the deliverables. You think they're doing this for other towns too? Um, the, for this, um, pretty much um, with the Kingsbury branch um, survey, just Woodbury. Right uh -huh. at the moment. That I know of. Sure. You did, Sure. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll see see what, later. See what the match um, is. On here. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just let her know that we're still interested. We have some questions and kind of wait to want to wait to see until the budget is a little bit more put together. Do you want that for the next meeting, Michael? Yeah. Let's have. Let's. Okay. I just have one question. Sure. Um, you mentioned at the beginning that there were f five sites. Yes. And now you said we're going to probably just do three. That's the I'm original. talking about the implementation further and further down the road, well, well into the future. Okay. The, the, the full design would be for all five sites. Okay, that's yeah. what I was asking. The full yeah. design would be all and, five sites. And then we can choose when and what to implement in, in the future. So it's basically a phase in. Yeah, I mean, sites. what we would do is there will be other, you know, the only, you know, the only way we're going to do any of this work is through grants, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. And um, what we would do is, and then the Regional Planning Commission will help us. Um, they'll kind of guide us to what grants would be um, appropriate um, and we'll, we'll make applications. You can prioritize which one you want to start with. Right? Yeah, and I already have, you know, I, I talked about, you know, the prioritization mm -hmm. in my mind would be fixing the whole bottom of Valley Lake Road, um, you know, and that would take two, possibly three sites mm -hmm. off the list. So you think this would cure the problem for the firemen on their annex? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the whole reason. That's I mean, that's a big reason for well, why we're doing all this. And we're behind the site and start over. <laughs> right. Well, the road crew did do some work, um, you know, lowering the road this fall um, and putting a little bit of a trench there. Um, and I haven't heard, you know, that two inches of rain we got early in December. I hadn't heard of any flooding at all. Um, but uh, of course, the water from that runs right into the Kingsbury branch. So this is. This grant um, and the survey is to try to find ways of collecting that water so that it either seeps into the ground and then seeps into the, the river, the brook, um, without the sediment um, from the road and the parking lot. And, um, you know, that, that's, the, that's the crux of this project is to keep um, uh, erosion from running into the Kingsbury branch. But it would also solve the flooding problem at the annex. That's part of the part of the deal. And we would do the paving, you know, once this work in that area was done, for us as, as a town, my, my thinking is is that we would do the paving once all that work is done, pretty much, you know, right after. Uh, and we have and we would have the money in the paving fund to pay for it. So and, and that wouldn't be a part of this an implementation grant. That would be a part that the town would do on its own. Um, having that pot of cash and, and the paving fund to, to pay for it. But whoever's doing the design would have to know that that's the yes. plan. They, yes, I would want them to know that. Mm -hmm. Do you so, think that's a possibility for this summer, or are we looking further out? I would say the soonest a possibility for the <coughs> following summer. Okay. The design would probably take the course of this coming summer, yeah. um, and then we would have to look for grants and apply for grants, and then you know, hopefully get chosen for it. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we could do that through the through the winter once the full design is done, and, and then, then if we're lucky, we could do it um, the next summer. Sure, and budget for it. Yeah, and budget for it. Exactly. Yeah. So, and maybe it would be. Hopefully, I'm hoping that it would be the following summer. Mm -hmm. um, you know. If we're lucky, it will be. Um, yeah. But I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Pam, you know, this is something I've been with, talking with Pam about when they first started doing the survey. And, and she thought that it would be doable to do the design this coming summer and then do the implementation, whatever we chose to do for a first step um, 
the following summer. Mm -hmm. um, and she knows of different places that um, that we can approach for grants. For grants. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll let her know that we're definitely interested in to continue and um, I'll try to get a sense of the deadline from her so we can make a decision at the sure. next level. Yeah. I think it's within the deadline. I think it's sometime in February that she needs to... She needs to know that we're serious about yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I'll have her send a letter of support so that we can look at it and tweak it any way that we... Sure. Yeah. So the possibility of some of the design work happen happening and. 2020 fiscal year? Yes. So does that mean you would have to put some match in the budget? Yeah, we would put, um, yeah, we would put a match in, in the budget. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, we definitely have a end of January deadline for mm -hmm. that. If, if you're confident about reaching the match, mm -hmm. why would it have to go? In it wouldn't have to go in, you're right. I mean, it would be. Especially, in it, kind. you know, it would be in kind, yeah. basically. It would be row crew, mm -hmm. time, equipment use. Um, yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. probably no materials. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and then it would be um, my time. So, so with, with our new numeric, do we have to show okay. if we do get the grant? Would the grant come in fiscal year 2020? And if it does, we may have to show the grant money is coming in on one side as a grant, and then going out. Yeah, except we would never receive any grant money to, to spend. Oh. Right. Hmm. Yeah. That would be oh. all through the Regional Planning Commission. But okay. you'd have to document That's the hours. Difference. Of course. Yeah, that would yeah. be, we would have to submit a report in order to meet our match. Right. Yeah, so the yes. hours would be documented. It's kind of the same as a local hazard yes. mitigation thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, whether or not we're going to see those monies, if FEMA's going to cut us a check mm -hmm. for the 10500 whatever, yeah. and or 7500 yep. which which is how much we're going to have to pay regional mm -hmm. planning. Mm -hmm. And it's whether like that will be cut to Woodbury, the town of Woodbury, or will that go directly to the Regional mm. Planning Commission. We'll go di directly to the Regional Planning okay. Commission. Yeah. Because mm. if it comes to us, we have to show it coming in and going right. out. Mm. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, it would not come mm. to us. Um, mm. It's like the, well, you know, the Municipal Road General Permit that grants in a, mm -hmm. it's yeah. pretty much the same thing where we have to document all right. of the, you know, equipment, mm. use, uh, time, materials, stuff like that, and then we send that in um, as a report. And then we get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a reimbursement thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. okay. Mm -hmm. So put that down here. All right. Next up, Tom okay. Clark's report. Sure. Exciting stuff. It's very exciting stuff. We got a clean site letter, and I thought you should all have it. Because <laughs> it's very special. This is. We've been waiting three, the CLC, four years for the certificate of completion. No, 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 that's not no. the COC. This is the no. clean site oh, letter. Oh, well, clean site letter. Oh, this well, then my the minutes COC are The COC thing was, um, yeah, that's something else. That has to do with the completion of the contamination monitoring that's been going on for right. how many years, Brian? Long time. Long time. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. 25. Yeah. Closing of... So with this clean side letter, then the town going now and and I the structure? No, not quite. Okay. Um, clean side letter. Not that I'm anxious to get, means... this, <laughs> to get this thing done. Well, this has probably has gone to FEMA by now, but they still won't act on it until they get the uh, approve that other yes, thing yes. you were yeah, working well, on. Yeah, and that's in FEMA's, FEMA's hands. Yeah. I was told that as long as FEMA has a draft, that they could release the funds. Could. Hmm. Yeah, that, that yeah. it sounded to me from um, Lauren that they had to approve it to some extent. Okay. Right. It was Stephanie Smith that told us that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then, yeah, then uh, next thing is we have to find out how much more money we're going to ask for from them and submit another application. Okay, we'll know how much more money. So 
peppers almost, except for our last phase of the project, which we still will have no idea about. The stream restoration part. We'll still have to pump that. <sighs> well, there'll be a grant for that, I'm sure. No, that's part of our. That's part of our. Part of that. Part of the HMDP. Yeah. Have to pump for that. Is that a technical no. term? Mm. <laughs> uh, this uh, I sent you. This but I also made you a copy of that. My draft of the report for the, for the town report, the status. Yeah. Yes, I did see. So once we get uh, closer to, to, what did I say here? The uh, phase one environmental site assessment still has to be redone, and the Brella program is going to pay for that. So there's no financial involvement for us there, and we don't get to right. use that as part of our match because. Um, state money and it's a state program. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's waiting for people at EPA to get back to work because the government's been shut down. Yep. So. so that would be that the phase one is more a federal thing as, as opposed to a state? It's a federal requirement. Yeah, okay. it's a FEMA requirement. The first phase one that we did way, way back right. was in order to get us in line for the phase two, mm -hmm. uh, which worked and we got all that stuff done. But now you have to have a phase one within because. six months of the yeah. actual project. So, um, and then Brella decided in order to qualify for that, there had to be a survey. We don't have a survey. Um, so they decided they thought they could wrap it all into one contract. So that would be great. We'd get a survey too. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. And then at some point we'll get an award letter from FEMA and take that to the bank and borrow a bunch of money and buy the property. And yippee. Okay. And there we go. <clears throat> so after we borrow the money, how quickly can we expect the funds from FEMA? That I don't know. <laughs> it's all reimbursement. Right. So yeah. we have to show in with the saying that the town now has purchase the no we have to do the whole thing oh so i don't think they reimbursed in phases they don't i no, haven't been led to believe that they, they would, would. Uh, we'd have to so so it would be a short-term note yeah not very much interest i'm sure we'd have to submit a pretty detailed report final report final yeah report yeah before before they finally release the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's exciting, I guess. Well, it's <laughs> progress. It is progress. <laughs> There's yeah. still a lot of just getting this lot of work to be letter. done. Yeah, really. Yeah. And, yeah. and the second part of your presentation tonight is mm -hmm. the actual RFP responses mm. to have the site demolished and stuff taken away. Yep. And I brought my letter opener because I hate ripped envelopes. <laughs> so if you, if you don't mind, I'll uh, open the envelopes. This is like the Academy of Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. We're just going to note who uh, we're not going to read this. Right, right. So just right. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I, can, I can know who this is from by reading the uh, return address. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'll That's do true. We could have just. I'll put together a cost matrix. Okay. And in the next couple of weeks, we'll sit down with Diana and Don Mosh, the engineer who's been helping us with this, and do the evaluation to make the bid award on the 28th. Okay. Well, we don't have to. I mean, there's no rush to give, to give the bid award. Right. But, but I don't want it to get stale either. Yeah. No, I mean, if it's clear, there's no reason not to because plus, people are working and they need to plan their summer projects. And mm -hmm. We're right up against the town report that to file yeah. them. Yeah. So if this has to be a separate article mm -hmm. to increase you know, our yeah, we need match, to we oh, have to let the yeah. folks know. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I believe that mm -hmm. the 28th is, mm -hmm. is, yeah. is okay. very important. Well, no. Unless you can delay the town report printing. No. No. <laughs> uh, oh. no, but you have, get a, you have enough of an idea of the total cost without, once you look at these, without having to uh, um, 
without having to award the contract. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this um, bid is from Du Bois Construction. Okay. <coughs> this one's from Mountainside Excavation, East Hardwick. This one is from Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavation, South Rygate, Vermont. This one is from Lamberti Excavating. <coughs> ah. <coughs> what was yours again, Skip? Pardon Blue, me? Blue Mountain? Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavation mm -hmm. from South okay. Rygate. Okay. So if you can trust me with these, or if you want to just make a copy of the bid sheet, mm -hmm. I'll put together a spreadsheet okay. and, and matrix. Okay. Can you trust me with them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to do it tomorrow if you want to look at them tomorrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll be in my Thursday yeah. or something. Okay. okay, so town report. You're working on the select board report, oh, yeah. and Michael's working on the road report. Oh, okay. Um, we have enough signatures for the Central Vermont Economic Development Corporation, three hundred dollars. Even though I think one of our auditors, Eagle Eye, noticed that this petition actually has the wrong date on it, but you know. <laughs> I don't think the people who signed it really noticed that this talks about the annual town meeting held on Tuesday, March 5, 2018. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> You're getting stared at. <laughs> <laughs> so what my question is, do you really want this to be a separate article or do you just want it to be back in with all the other? I would say back in with all the others. Yeah. Keep it yep. simple. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So Brandy's working on some kind of a budget thing for you to talk about. We got our town maps, our tax maps. Do we really? Yeah, well not like physically. Oh. But uh, Pam DeAndrea was was working on them and she just had to click a final uh, part of her pro progress and I'm going to go through them briefly and make a bunch of updates you know, just on the names of the property owners and then she'll print something out. And Are they more precise than the ones we have now? I don't think so. Oh. They look nicer. Okay. Could we use that <laughs> as a as the survey for the Woodbury <laughs> store instead no, of hiring a survey? Not a survey. No. Okay. No. Unfortunately, I mean it was <coughs> the new tax maps are the result of a VTrans program that we got involved with, and I thought it would be really an updating of the tax maps, yeah. but it really wasn't. It was really copying the old tax maps and copying all the surveys that have been submitted since like the 90s when those tax maps were written. And they didn't go, yeah, anyways, it's, it's fine, but they're not surveys. They didn't go back, the people who did the work for VTRAN did not go back and look at all the um, deeds for all the subdivisions that have happened since the last few maps were done. So the clean site letter, getting back to this, mm. do you think it's important enough that we post it on the website? Oh, sure. Yeah. It's big news. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Maybe you can put a, That's what or can put a little, like, Stars all around it, yes. <laughs> it's been a flashing. Yeah. Uh, yes. It's been a major goal for a few yes. years now. Yes, yeah. really. Okay. It's definitely a significant step. Can I have a creative license to do whatever I want to the person? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right. You want the electronic copy. You probably already have it. I sent it to you. Yeah, I do have it, yeah. Cool. Okay. Great. Thank you, Diana. Good news. Yeah. Let me know when you're done with those. Okay. Something like the Matrix. All right. Next up is our treasurer, Ms. Smith. Start with financial. 
actual statements and then balance sheets. Plans and goals. I brought one in, so I'll just steal yours. Um, I transferred um, 13000 today to cover um, today's AP. Um, income over, I calculated well since back December 26th. Um, delinquency taken was $3,304.10. In cash receipts, we took in $3,303.89. So those are for permits and things like that? Cash that receipts. is for fire department insurance reimbursement. Okay. Uh, land recording, <clears throat> recording copies, prepaid taxes already, uh, vault fees. Uh -huh. Online, there was electronic transfer for $28 for civil fines in that time frame. Um, civil fines are from speeders, speeders, or dog? It doesn't break it down. Okay. It doesn't. So I made some adjustments. I added the trucks. All oh, the trucks. So, so we're the on the budget now here? Um, <coughs> what page? So a couple things. So we have the new piece of equipment. Which this is. Oh, is that the payment schedule? Yes and no. Oh. They had decided um, July first. I had switched it to October. Yeah. October to make 2019. It, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that'll start this fiscal year. Just want to look at the dates. We still have. And is everything Our, the thing with all the stuff with Daimler? Are they happy now? No. 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 Yeah, I saw that today. No. And then like Someone stuff right in the more. middle of why don't we have a contract yet? And okay. do you want me to get involved? Because I can be short. It's, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am um, Actually, short and I, sweet. I called um, Maria today, hoping to be able to talk to her. Um, but Skip, if you want to do it, go ahead. I mean, I mean, I've been trying to guide this thing through too, because um, I sort of feel responsible for the the truck. Um, yeah, I've been on the periphery. I've been just. In the reading end, they're going to want his signature. I did Michael's mention signature. you were leaving, <coughs> so they do yeah. want his signature on it. I'm okay. happy to. Okay, if you want to do that, yeah. yeah. And for content release. She hasn't right. sent anything back saying she needs more information, so I don't know okay. what the delay is, but. Yeah. Um, I, I sent her, you know, when we were sending those emails to her, I sent her an email saying, you know, that if there's anything else you need to contact, you know, right. you and I. Right. Um, and I haven't heard anything either, and I was surprised to see that. The, I called her personally to make sure and clear up any information that if she hadn't received anything, and mm -hmm. we were fine, but the other company wants money on their truck. Right. Yeah, I don't blame them. Right. So. Just been hanging around. So, Brandy. So this will start not on July 1st, 2019, but October 1st, 2019? Yes. Okay. Yep. And so... I, that was just uh, <clears throat> just a rough... Okay, but the But they lease... will be sending us a new... Yes. Okay, yep. so the lease payment... The lease payment is what the lease payments are. This is a total of 27... And it breaks 27. it down between the interest and the okay. principal. So we do the uh, third fund to reflect this. Right. So that being said... I have one other question about Daimler. Uh -huh. Did you get any kind of confirmation from her about the audit? Was she okay with what you sent her? You haven't heard? She hasn't said yay or nay okay. yet. All right. Okay, She doesn't work for the government, does she? <laughs> no, she doesn't, unfortunately. So this year, <clears throat> this next this year, <clears throat> this will be our last payment for 13 Freightliner yep. and 14 Freightliner. Mm -hmm. oh. But, yeah. see the calculation? So we are going to actually, if we are budgeting, 
hypothetically for ninety thousand. Nice. Yeah. We are going to have to borrow what's already in the HER fund because it's not going to cover them. Mm -hmm. So. So knocking the HER down currently is at thirteen. It's going to be down to five. Okay, so there will be some reserve in the HER fund after everything is said and done. Just around five grand. Yeah, but that'll make you nervous. I'm just making you aware of it. Okay. No, so there's no yeah, cushion. We knew it would be yeah. pretty well. So there's no money out. going into the HERF. We're actually going to be taking money out of the HERF to cover right. these bills but we for have, this, this fiscal for year. For this year. We have some surplus okay. that we're Correct. okay with. Yeah, that was, that was, Correct. We, we were so this, I made this nice, big, and pretty. This is the current running tabs of the due to from that's on your balance sheet. First, old eyes. Um, and that's where you're at. Uh, so this is this is the 5000 Paving. Oh, these are all the paving. Paving is 41000 oh, So, yeah, okay. these are all the breakdown of, of what you're currently at. And if okay, everybody would like a coffee to take yeah. with you. Sure. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. Have, yeah. Just don't plan any to take any more out of the herb. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. And was there still conversation about. Sylvia. No. No. The fire department? Yeah. Were we still planning on leaving that in there? Was that. I don't recall. Is it reserved? No, it was stuck in there for emergency purposes in case. I think it might have been one time they went off the road, we had to hire a big wrecker. To back up. Back up. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I was just bringing up, I don't know if the discussion was still. So the money's just setting in there right, right. now. But the interest, mm -hmm. yeah. what's, what's your name? Did Those you want to see the other? Yeah, one of those. You can't have them. I'm just letting you look at them. <laughs> I can make copies. Yeah, These you? are just my equipment okay. um, calendar so I know when we're done with them. The right. places. So yeah, these two guys are done as of this year. seven one when I pay this right. these two. Yep. Well that's pretty significant also. And then we have Yeah, I'll need copy of those. Just to make sure my her fund that's twenty three calculations are okay. So do you want me to, you know how we created the HERB schedule? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we're technically not going by it. Yes and no. no. Now that the equipment are in the, so we're, I'll tweak it so that. Um, what do you mean we're not following this? Well, I haven't installed the new piece of equipment, which you oh. can't have that either. I, I, I need copies. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't installed. I'll right. put that in the room. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'll make all the, uh, the new other adjustments. Ad adjustments into the room. And I'll send it to you. Okay. To make sure it's okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'll get you copies of these. I'll, I'll make two more copies of these. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, do you want me to give you this different um, budget items <coughs> for the town highway? Outside of the meeting? Well, we have something. We're, we'll budget update. Okay, yeah. so we'll if you can that. hang around till 7.45. Okay. okay. Because I have a, another item for Ron Wells' salary as a lister that okay. we really have to change. Okay. Sounds good. Patrick. Hey, Patrick. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. Okay. Um, Yep, so for the town road society, I don't really have a whole lot to report for the road crew. You know, it's winter time, um, plowing and sanding, and uh, just trying to keep up with the, with the weather. Um, everything is holding up well, I, although I, I learned tonight that there is a truck down, I guess, um, which I didn't know about. Um, which one? One of the ten wheelers, I assume. I think it's the, uh, the 1999. International six wheel. Oh, the six wheel. That's yeah. that's kind of just sitting in the yard. So I'm not sure it's, what. It's a standard shift truck, correct? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we were going to utilize that to have Peter Daly take oh, his CDL okay. test, but apparently the rear end has an issue. Yeah. Yeah. So if you take it to have his CDS test, <laughs> you're CDL going to be in trouble. Test, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll inspect the truck and say, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's one that's got a cracked rear end housing that drips. Yeah, that drips all the time. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and, it's, and the gears and stuff are pretty pretty noisy in there. So, yeah. so would they use one of the 10-wheelers? Well, those are automatic. 
automatic, so right. he would be right. limited to driving an automatic. Mm -hmm. He's got a truck to borrow. Oh, yes. He does. And he stopped there today, and I guess Tim Neal's going to go with him okay. for the test, so he has the CDL driver. Okay. So. All right. so, sounds like Peter's all set. Yeah. I see. And that's the 23rd. 23rd of January. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the road, I mean, the road crew reporting. Um, and then I, you know, I did want to discuss the uh, trees on Ainsworth Road. Mike McGlynn's trees. Mike McGlynn's right. trees, yeah. And our, Did we get some bids for them? Yes. Yeah, I've got bids. The danger um, trees. I've got, I, I'll give you the whole um, litany of. Um, <coughs> so I called um, A and B. I called Jamie Benjamin. I called Matt Leach, and I called Kirk Thompson. Um, I had to call A and B twice before I got someone, or I don't know. Um, and they were going to go look at the trees and submit a bid. I don't. They've never called me back. Um, he did mention, Adam mentioned that they were very busy working, doing work for the uh, Hardwick Electric. So um, he didn't ever get back to me. <coughs> so um, that's, that's where they're at. Jamie Benjamin was not interested in cutting the trees, um, but he did uh, recommend a fellow named Joe Bain. So I also contacted him. Um, Matt Leach um, got back to me very promptly submitted a bid and then later I called him again just wanted to make sure that he had insurance um, and he hand delivered his insurance to me uh, the same day that I called. Kirk Thompson is actually has been contacted by Mike Buckland to deal with the trees once they're dropped and he's not interested in dropping them. He's he also interested in dealing with them after they're drop. He's interested in dealing with the logs but not the branch brush Debris. Um, and he wondered if the town, with its chipper, the road crew would want to deal with that. So I don't um, even know if that chipper works. Right. So um, that that's we can discuss that. Um, I did check with <coughs> Greg to see if the road crew would be you know, willing to do that. Um, they said they would be willing to do it if we told them to do it, but they, obviously they wouldn't do it until the next spring summer. Um, and then, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if we have them do that, they should keep track of their times and the equipment, and we should build my for that. It's not our responsibility not. to chip up. The, um, so, so I contacted Joe Bain. Um, also, um, he was very prompt in getting back to me. He sent me a bid, and also his proof of insurance. Um, Matt Leach has sent a bid for $2,800 to drop the trees. And Joe Bain sent me a bid for three thousand dollars to drop the trees. So, um, as far as you know, did that include once they're dropped, limbing them? No. Okay, so this is just to they may limb them to drop them. To you know, drop I don't know them, how, yeah. what the process will be in dropping them, but basically, uh, they would just be dealing with getting the trees on the ground. Yeah, however they would do that. Um, they were both, you know. Called them, they responded. Um, they were both, you know, very prompt. Um, so, um, you know, Matt Leach is two hundred dollars cheaper, um, but otherwise, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they both um, seemed okay. equally responsible. Uh, in, uh, in class, so. so this is out of my scope. So, mm -hmm. so if we drop them. See if we contact one of these gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We drop them. Could we leave the trees on the ground till spring to have them limbed? Um, because it's going to be dropped in like a foot of snow now. Yeah, it's basically you know we're we're dropping. I mean, this is my thinking on that. We're dropping them to eliminate our liability in case one right. of them fall down, um, which so one of them has. Yeah, once shot. once they're dropped. Our responsibility is done. Correct. So, um, dropping them now would be, I think, the more prudent thing to do, or dropping them as soon as possible. And then, you know, Kirk asked that Kirk Thompson asked that uh, we let him know um, when that's going to happen. And it sounds like he would come and get the logs um, soon. And um, whether he would be, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if he wants the logs, then he should. Whatever branches are left, it's up to him to take them off. Because um, basically, once the trees are down on the ground, they're the property of the 
The owner. The owner. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay. So it's the only reason why we're doing this is because they're danger trees. Mm -hmm. One is already broken and fallen from yeah. a neighbor across the road. Um, and the tree warden has said that they are dead hazardous. Yeah. Dead hazardous. So, so we get them down and that's it. Give we're done. Mark a call and mm -hmm. give Mike a call and yeah. say, you know, yeah. here you go. I could check in with Mike, and I don't know if Kirk has shared with Mike that he only wants the logs, the tree, you know, the trunks of the trees. Um, I don't know if Mike knows that or not. So Kirk might limb them just to cut because you got to cut the trunks up. Yeah, anyways. he would. He would. You know, he would have I to just leave the tree. limbs there for yep. Mike to take care of in the spring. Or well, whatever. if he does that, that's fine. Yeah. 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 And as far as us asking the road crew to do the work, um, I would prefer that. If we just, you know, mm -hmm. can we be done with it once we drop them? Absolutely. Yeah, it's Mike's responsibility. Yes, Susan. Do we have any requests from Michael McGlynn to drop the trees? Do we have he, anything from yes. him requesting? Well, earlier this summer he talked to me about dropping the trees. Um, I think, and it was more, um, he wasn't worried about them falling down or a liability. He, he was aware that they were dead. and, and Kind of wanted them removed and was, you know, letting me know that they they were in the town right away and would the town want to take them down and and we have talked to Paul Gillis about, you know, who's responsible for what and and um, and the and the end result, you know, for any uh, destruction or um, if they hurt someone falling down, the town would be liable. So that's why we are wanting to drop them, but beyond that, once they're on the ground, they are the property of the property, you know, right. even though they're in the town right away. So, um, you know, I would just like to keep it clean, and we did our part, right. and, and yeah. it's up to Mike to do his part. Okay, thank you. So. The statute indicates that once the town tree warden has submitted that these trees pose a danger and they're dead, then the municipal... Yeah. Board can go in and have them taken down. No. What, what we're trying to stay away from is the precedent of being um, a landscaper. Landscaper. For, yeah. <coughs> we Absolutely. don't want that. Yeah. We don't want to be a general yeah. landscaping contractor for, mm -hmm. for this. So, you know, Michael, what's your sense? You know, I would rather go with the lowest cost. Mm -hmm. That's. I mean, yeah. I think we would be fine with either, and the costs are. Yeah. Close, but one is two hundred dollars lower. So yeah, I, I know both of them as well. And yeah, and both of them are good. Yeah, yeah. So make the motion go with Matt Leach at twenty-eight hundred. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So I'm fine with contacting Matt and Joe and letting them know. Okay. And I'm fine with contacting Mike McGlynn. Okay. Um, yep. Letting him understand what we're going to do. Right. And if these gentlemen could call me, if you could call me, leave the time and which day. Right, I'll, I'll try to get a, a, I will get a date um, from them and, and I'll, I'll let Kurt know that. Okay. When, when, uh, when I, when I, uh, yeah. I'm sure Mike will want to be there yeah. to watch. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And I'll give Brandy the insurance. Um, yeah, she'll want that. We are actually ahead of schedule, but everybody's here, so this is stunning. Do, do you expect any more folks from your? Uh, we might have some other school board members show up. I don't know. It, I didn't get RSVPs from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because we are actually ten minutes ahead of schedule. If you want to uh, delay. No, I think we should go for it. Okay. I don't think it's that. I mean, Stephen uh, Murphy, I think everybody knows Stephen, sure. if you don't. And uh, he has been our point person. Stephen, you might want to pull up here. He's been our point person on the okay. so-called articles agreement. So uh, it's good that he's here. But I do have a couple questions just kind of... Um, Back on to how we got to where we are, that we could use the time. I just, I'm, I'm wondering when, when the original um, uh, meetings were done to, to merge, um, there was something that 
occurred that had the Woodbury School Board <coughs> saying that this wasn't the merger wasn't possible. Um, and was that because of Lakeview's insistence on not merging? Now, in the very beginning, I wasn't involved. Okay, all right. So, um, but I have been involved, obviously, for, uh, gosh, almost two years now. Um, and what I'm aware of is all the discussions prior to me getting on the board basically came to naught. The, mm -hmm. the, the parties could not come to agreement about mm -hmm. um, a voluntary merger, and I think there were various reasons for okay. that. Could I uh, just interject here, because I was on the school board then and I was part of that. There was no desire on the part of any of the schools to merge at that okay. point. It wasn't as though one of the schools wanted to I was just wondering if it was one of them. Okay, good. Yeah. No, but I think it is important for everybody to understand, and I'm sure some of you do, that uh, when I got on the board, there was an effort to not merge, but to accomplish basically the same ends of Act 40 search without a merger. Mm -hmm. What could we do voluntarily between among the schools um, to make the most out of all of our assets and our resources? Uh, and we had some excellent discussions. Uh, the school districts, including the Crassberry mm -hmm. and Wolka, mm -hmm. We're all working together. We actually came up with a plan. We had wow. specific things we were going to do that we wanted to do to advance a really integrated education system here. And we knew, and we thought, and we talked about how at some point that would mean we would we would want it to include moving students from one school to another, depending on what the schools were going to do, and you'd mm -hmm. use the strengths of the particular schools. Sure. In a, in a nutshell, and, and we went to the secretary at the time, Rebecca Holcomb, and had a meeting with her. Mm -hmm. She was having meetings with all the affected uh, supervisory unions, and everybody told us she get 15 minutes, and mm -hmm. you know. We talked with her for an hour, mm -hmm. and people kept coming to her door and saying, eh, 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 yeah. she <laughs> but she, she was very interested in what we were talking about because we were all there, and we were all saying the same thing, how we thought we could accomplish this working together. Uh, anyway, so when the first report came out, that was her report, and 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 it did not recommend that we merge. Mm -hmm. um, but then she resigned uh, over some dispute, I'm sure, with the governor, and um, the next secretary came along and said, you need to merge. So that's sort of how we got to where we are, and it was the 11th hour. You know, it was literally sometime in November, I can't remember right. the exact date now, um, when the final report was due on, 11, on November 30th. And we were all taken aback. Um, so it's been a really a hurry and, and uh, catch up kind of process. And it has not been clear. And I think that's one of the messages I have to deliver tonight is eat, uh, things are changing. Or let me say, new information is coming up literally every week. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we're being taken by surprise. Um, and so it's really hard to pinpoint where we are. I, a couple of updates I do want to share with you. Um, one is that the supervisor union did not issue correct notice on the organizational meeting. I saw that. And they were off by a day, basically. They mm -hmm. included the day of the meeting, and you can't do that. It has to be 30 days, not counting the day of the meeting. So they had to... Um, Pull back and reschedule that, and now it's scheduled. Uh, we don't. We don't actually have a date oh. because <laughs> oh, we were going to do it the third week in February. But here, this is illustrative <coughs> of what we're dealing with. Then we, the the lawsuit that you may have heard about. Sure. Yeah. Actually, the lawyers uh, got together and agreed on a stay. A stay is different than an injunction. The court, the, the judge did not issue an injunction to stop everything. But the lawyers agreed on a stay so that they could both uh, prepare their cases more thoroughly and be ready for a hearing. And that stay uh, postpones the organizational meeting until at least the third week in February. And we don't actually... I don't actually know today, as I sit here, what that day is. Maybe there's a, a set date, but it's it's late. And then, so we have to set the organizational meeting after that. Okay. So we just lost basically a month. A month. Yeah. 
And right. it's really hard because the other deadlines, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. So if there's going to be a new board, the merged district will have a new board. Those new board members, according to these articles, have to file six weeks before the election. So you have to start backing this stuff up and thinking, <laughs> there's almost no time. And never mind a budget. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. What does that do with the budgeting process? It makes it very, very challenging because I'm going to tell you another update, <laughs> which is even more problematic. So a week ago or so, we have, I want to try to be clear here. We have a couple of committees for the meeting. Now, they're not formal committees. They can't take any action because not the organizational meeting hasn't happened and all that good stuff. But we're meeting to discuss things today. One of them is about the articles, and Stephen's been a representative on that. And the other is about the finances. And we, we were having, a, I thought, a very constructive conversation about what a merged budget would look like. And then at the last meeting, the supervisory union leadership told us that their calculations uh, around taxes would create uh, extra taxes for hardware. Our taxes would go down a little bit, Hardwick's taxes would go up. Now, i got to tell you, first of all, I was very skeptical about this. Sure. I, because what they were describing to me was like, I don't know how it can happen. I, I just don't see how it can happen. And if it does happen, the voters in Hardwick will never approve it. Sure. Never approve spending more money, basically, to take on the other two schools, right? That's it in a nutshell. Right. Um, so then I found out just, oh, God, what day was it now? Probably Saturday, I got an email. Uh, I think all the board members got an email, yeah. basically retracting that statement and saying what they told us was not 100% accurate and we would learn more at our meetings this week. So to me that's very symptomatic of what we're dealing with here right now. We don't know. So they're making it up as they go along. Well, they're finding things out as they go along. Yeah. It's not clear. Act 46 is not particularly clear about a lot of details and the <laughs> articles are not particularly clear about a lot of details. Because, you know, you start getting into not just uh, school law, but tax law, and even real estate law. When you start talking about who owns what and moving properties and all that good stuff, mm -hmm. it gets very complicated. And then you talk about election laws and having these meetings to choose whether you're going to vote by an Australian ballot or not. And none of that can happen, and the clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our budget, I'm actually very worried because... A week ago, I thought, I don't know what's going to happen to the budget. Um, now, depending, we'll learn tomorrow night. We have our regular school board meeting tomorrow night, and hopefully we'll learn more. But as of a few days ago, I thought it was we were going to have to put together our own Woodbury budget just in case. Which, um, actually, Emu, Emu and uh, Stowe are doing. I know they're in a different situation, but they are putting together two budgets. I, I, you know, almost some time. I thought we had. Is there anything that. happening in the legislature just to kind of well? I reached out to Davy Acaboni, who yeah. I think you know is pretty well placed in all this stuff, and um, all he said was, you know, he the stay that the lawyers agreed mm -hmm. to creates more time. <laughs> No, it doesn't. But I have well, it we got mixed away. messages okay. on that too because they they say it's not a stay. Oh. oh. So, so anyway, that's where we are. <coughs> um, but I, it's it's so messy. I I think we'll know more tomorrow night, okay. and I think maybe some of you, one or two of you, were planning on joining us tomorrow yeah. night, so that be there. Yeah. should be very helpful. Because time is running out. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot keep doing this. Uh, it's going to be the end of January. Mm -hmm. We are not going to have a budget for the town report. I promise you that. Um, there's just no way. Um, whether we even have one for town meeting is a, is a huge challenge. <laughs> but presumably the merger is going forward, and that's not what we should be focused on. We should be focused on a unified budget. That's mm -hmm. what I expect to hear tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. So at least that puts us back where we were a couple of weeks ago. But I think the big question for 
the school board and the select board right now is what direction do we want to take with regard to the property? We all agree that the town owns right. the property. Uh, in the um, draft agreement that Attorney Gillis uh, wrote, um, it identifies that the, uh, the um, library building belongs to the school district. I don't know how it can because it's on the town's property. He the, the, the contents of the library belong to the library. Right. He, I don't Not think, all of the contents either. Yeah, I don't that believe he addressed it? the ownership of that. I didn't bring a hard copy with me tonight. I, but I, my feeling about that document actually is it was actually really pretty good. I have several questions. It looks very familiar to me. I mm -hmm. had already seen one from another town. Really? Yeah. Yes. I imagine that. And, uh, and so um, it, it, it looks pretty solid to me in general. And I think we could pretty quickly put together a small group that could really hone in on Or we could just do it ourselves, you know, over... Of two or three weeks. I'm sure we could come sure. up with a document. The thing is, we, we need a document for right now because oh. we have no agreement. Right. What I'd like to do is move forward with this. Yep. This document for right now to protect the town's asset, which is the land, the buildings, and also to protect you guys going forward. Because I understand that uh, the superintendent had some questions regarding, well, how can you be in that building if you don't have an agreement? And so uh, I think we should move forward with this so we have an agreement in our hand and say, okay, here's our agreement, and show that to the new unified district and say, and say these are the terms and conditions that the town of Woodbury is willing to operate under for the new elementary school district. Well, I think, it, in my mind, Skip, it's, um, you do something for right now and then you modify it as needed. When you go into a unified district, the language would be a little different going forward. But uh, yes, I'm 100% I'm with you on that. Now, the only thing is, so, I, and any school board member who disagrees with me should pitch in here, but mm. I think we should talk about this tomorrow night at our meeting, and then we should literally start going back and forth on the language. But I, I need to let the supervisor reunion attorneys take a look at it, too. Why would you need that? Because sooner or later they're going to have to take a look at it. Right. But I mean, they are still our right. administrative body. Right. Um, I don't anticipate a problem. Yeah. Well, you never can tell. Wouldn't this agreement just be between the Woodbury School Board, school district as it's comprised yeah. now, and the town? Yep. It's not between. I mean, the, it, the two municipalities, in my mind, yeah. are making an agreement exactly. Yeah. So I agree with you about that, but I think that. Just to make sure we're not running afoul of anything else, I think we should have them take a look at it. I don't see any harm in it. Well, no, because in the end, you're right. It's the two municipalities right. that are green. The two municipal entities. Municipal entities. <laughs> right. It would be a more so, open, yeah. inclusive approach that might. There's just so much confusion. Right. I just assume try right. to get out in front of some of this yeah. stuff. That's so we could send them a courtesy copy and say this is the least that we've agreed to. Well, so we can send them a draft to tell them what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. I'd be all for doing that. I don't see any harm in it because in the end it's us right. that we, we make the agreement, whatever we think makes sense. So, mm -hmm. um, I think one of my questions in an email to you is, have you hired an attorney? No, to... we have not yet, but I've started looking into it Okay. because there's just so much confusion. I am just concerned. So I contacted the VSBA and asked them if they had any attorneys they could recommend. Because <laughs> I, you know, there's a lot of attorneys out there, but that doesn't mean they're any sure. good at this law. Um, so I'll, I expect to know within a matter of days if there's somebody we can contact. And I hate to do it. I hate to spend the money, but I think it's just so complicated. You have to protect yourselves. Because we're going to have to. Because our town attorney said you should get this done as quickly as possible. Oh, I agree. I agree as quickly as possible. And I don't. We haven't had any discussion about it yet, so we'll start that tomorrow night. Okay. Um, but I think we can. Um, I, th I don't. I don't think it. To me, it looks fine. You know, it's, it's just a matter of. There's a couple little things I made some notes on, and questions that I would ask. But you know, I may just be wrong. I may be just misinterpreting it. And once we clear that up. Um, we don't I, have time. I have a question about the library property. That I guess I haven't seen this. So this is from Paul Gillies saying that the school district owns the library? I don't 
think it No. Well, I thought that's what it said. Where, I, don't know. I, 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 I just don't understand. It's one of the conditions, whereas I uh, believe it does address Whereas ownership. the Woodbury Elementary School building land, he did not include the, adja the adjacent building. What I did is, I think Michael was it, I think it, this is Michael's mm -hmm. note, mm -hmm. uh, to include the adjacent building, which right. is the community room and the library. Right. So that would be part of the lease. Because we believe that the town owns that building. Because it's on the town's property. Right. And the addition to the building was built by a State of Vermont Libraries grant that my wife wrote for <laughs> back, I don't know, in The second or part. Like the, the second part. Yeah. The, the part of the library is now. Yeah. Because yeah. right. yeah. the original part was built as an extra classroom. Was correct. Yes. Right. There's a picture somewhere of me standing on a roof, putting it, <laughs> nailing down shingles. Um, I was, yeah, that's what it was, quite an experience. But yeah, it was done by volunteer labor. A lot of the materials were donated. Sure. A lot of the work was donated even by the people who did professional work. So, so when that was done, was that considered owned <coughs> by the Woodbury School District? I did Every some research on that. Okay. And there was a town meeting, whatever year it was, have it here. Uh, there was uh, an approval to spend six thousand dollars for a first year lease on a portable classroom, and that's when people said, "Hey, this is crazy. You know, let's do something better." So there was actually another meeting to reconsider that um, um, motion, yeah, that article that was approved, and it was overturned. And then there was another meeting to approve fifteen thousand dollars to pay the, for the Woodbury Town School District to pay for the construction and I don't yeah. know if there was yeah. ever any calculation of how much extra went into it like the labor and all that stuff. Like that. No, I don't was that believe a select so. board meeting or a school meeting? No. no, it was a special it was town a meeting. Special town meeting. Because at okay. the regular town meeting we had approved the okay. temporary building and right. uh, we, we had another one just to over okay. rule that and, mm -hmm. and vote in in fact, it took about 10 minutes, you know, so oh, sure. right. everybody yeah. was in agreement about it and mm -hmm. bing, bang, boom. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was, it was, so that, I think that building was intended to be for the school, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, it still sits on the town's property, right? So all of that should be clarified in, in the document that the town owns all this and here's the mm -hmm. agreement between the town mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and one of the questions uh, was, you know, Diane brought up was about the, the wetland, which is also owned by the school district, right. we, um, and so you start thinking about this. Do we want the? What's the ultimate goal here? I mean, obviously, the ultimate goal is to protect the town's assets. But in 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 if the merger is going forward, which I think it is, um, there's this question about don't we have to transfer the property to the to the uh, new unified district who's we the town the town yeah won't. I gotta be careful yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> pronouns I use right, right? Uh, I can't see the town doing that but well, I, I, I would differ I mean for me I would like to see the school continue being the way it is and correct. if that's going to be if we, if we take a tough stance that way and they just say, okay, all the kids in Woodbury are going to go to Hardware, then we've, we've lost. Um, so I would, I would prefer that there be an understanding um, that the town owns all of that property that we, because there's an article, there's the section A and there's a section B where if they ever decide to close the school, we can buy it back for the dollar that we... They well, in spend. fact, they have to sell it back yeah. for a dollar, unless we don't want it. Yeah. But the issue with that is, I know that article, I think, by heart now, when, the, when they sell it back, or they sell it back to us, there are five conditions that have to be met. There are certain stipulations on what you can do with that property for five years. And to me, that's just a non -starter. But we can strike those from the agreement. Well, we, I'm looking at a note... Negotiate to it. looking at a note from from Steve and, and he said they couldn't come to, they didn't even start discussing any of the, uh, those, those. Well, this is another problem that's so developed, is yeah. the timing on the article. May Go ahead. I yeah, sure. add something on the point here on the, um, on the conveyance or non-conveyance of the property and the articles of agreement. 
Um, first, I'd like to make a correction. I attended a meeting here on the 19th, and I expressed my opinion that contracts entered between, or contracts entered between a, a district um, after November 1st, 2018, prior to July 1st, 2019, would be honored by the new Union District until 2020. I stated that was two years. Mm -hmm. So I was correct in, in, in my belief that contracts would be honored until maybe June 30th or July 1st, 2020. So essentially, it would be good, good for one year, not two. So that's the, the correction I make. Um, the, those contracts are addressed under Article 7, default Article 7. And they, they reference individual employment contracts in the last paragraph. Um, but they also state in the first paragraph that the new union district shall provide transportation of students, assignment of staff, implementation of curriculum in a manner that is consistent with the contracts, collective bargaining agreements, and provisions of law that are in effect during that academic year. And my, my belief at the last meeting was that these contracts would include a lease, because we were discussing a, a lease at the time, um, under ownership, town ownership of the school, and a lease to the new Union District. And essentially that, I think we're here discussing a lease with the Woodbury District, and then we were considering a lease sure. beyond with the new district. Okay, so that was on the 19th. Uh, on the 20th of December, I attended the first meeting of the Articles Committee, and the, the committee made what I thought was good progress. I, th I think all the members agreed that we were making good progress on, on all the points except one, and that was closure of the school. There was uh, disagreement about how we would proceed on that. Standard and Greensboro made a proposal that would have amended the articles to give the to reconfigure the composition of the school board um, and it essentially would have given Hardwick four seats on the new board mm -hmm. and then each of the other three towns one seat that was Stannard's proposal, uh, Stannard and Greensboro, that was their proposal um, and essentially uh, a counterpart to that, at least the way I viewed it, was that the, the schools, the, the towns in which the schools are located, would have sole authority over closure of the school. Now that, that sets a higher safeguard to the operation of the schools, mm -hmm. and protection to the operation of the schools, and puts that authority back in the, in, in the town. Under the default articles, <clears throat> that right is extended, it would be extended to both Hardwick and Woodbury because we, <coughs> these are town schools for, for two years. Um, Lakeview, because they're a union school, would be subject to closure by a, uh, an affirmative vote of the entire district. Okay, so there's, there's a lot to it, but okay, so now, now we we'll, still with you so now, far. Okay, good. <laughs> So, we reached, I think, cooperative, cooperative consensus on a lot of points regarding enrollment and having choice within the, the new district, so parents or guardians could request that their, that their um, students attend other schools. Um, we were making good headway, but we got stuck at that uh, point of closure. So. We agreed that we would meet again in a week's time, mm -hmm. December 27th, and come back to that issue. We came back on December 27th, and at the outset of the meeting, Joanne LeBlanc informed us that she had been, that she, that she received information from the OSSU attorney 
regarding the the property in Woodbury, the ownership of the property, and how that created uncertainty, because it's not squarely addressed in the articles. And it's my understanding that the attorney, um, his conclusion is that if the property in Woodbury, the school-related property, is not conveyed to the new Union District, then Article 3, Article 4, and Article 6 would not squarely apply. There's still some uncertainty about this, but um, he, he concluded that, um, and we, we can come back to this tomorrow to get the, to get the specifics, but he concluded that the New Union District would be under no obligation to enroll students in Woodbury. And he, he also concluded that they, the, the New Union District may not be obligated to enter into a lease agreement, even if that were an option. And, and Article 4, Closure of the Schools, um, yeah, I, I, I believe his conclusion was that the New Union District is not obligated to use the building. They may not be obligated to enroll any students in the building and that they may not be obligated to enter into a lease, even if that were an option. So the, the, meeting, uh, the meeting was not substantive beyond that point, because Joanne, um, she, in her opinion, and then all the members of the committee agreed that uh, not only Woodbury, but Lakeview, needed to go back and, and uh, discuss the ownership of their property because Lakeview Union operates two buildings. Sure. One, is, one is the school building, school proper, um, and then from my understanding, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders are, uh, are educated in a building owned by the town. Right. I believe it's yeah. the town hall. Sure. So there's some complications that arose there um, regarding Lakeview. So, in light of those uncertainties, the meeting concluded, and we made no further progress um, on the, the amendments. And Patrick mentioned earlier that there has been a, it's not a stay, but there's been a pause, <laughs> we'll call yeah. it a pause, a pause in the, the litigation, and as a result, the, I believe it's the Attorney General issued an order um, to reschedule some of these um, meetings. And now, as a result, the Articles Committee is no longer uh, authorized to, to <coughs> propose amended articles. Um, under, under this new time frame, the Articles Committee may stay composed until February 28th. They may make essentially proposals that then go to, they either could go to the transitional board or the newly elected new union district board and it would it would be essentially at their discretion or at, the, at their... Um, their yeah, my, my understanding yeah. is that any changes in the articles had to be effective by, I think it's February 28th. Yes. Yeah. And so you have to warn the meeting and everything. Yeah. We pretty soon. Not going to happen. Uh, well, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I think we've literally run ourselves out of time now. But as Stephen just said, there the new board can go ahead and make changes in the articles down the road. So, but having said that, there is a meeting scheduled for next Monday, the twenty-first, with the articles committee and the Budget Advisory Committee to try to sort out all this stuff that's been swirling around for the past couple of weeks. I don't know how to come out of that, you know. Uh, it's really hard to say. Yeah. In, um, my opinion, in my opinion, Article 6 in this Part A, <coughs> the, the 
the school district shall convey to the forming district for the sum of one dollar all these real estate, real estate lands, buildings, mm -hmm. property, mm -hmm. and all that. Isn't that short-sighted? Do they believe that the, the districts, as they're comprised now, own the buildings? They didn't do any research to say how many school buildings are actually owned by towns. Well, to that's, me, that's exactly the problem. To me, yeah. that's really short-sighted. That's yeah. like presumptive, presuming that the school district, as they are comprised now, owns the building and, and land and all that. And they don't. That's right. You know, so to me, Article 6 is, is just... It's like it doesn't ridiculous. apply, and this is yeah. the problem. They didn't consider this when they wrote these, right. apparently. Yeah. And so these almost don't apply to us. But it basically leaves us... What Stephen's saying, and this is what we've been we told, and I tend exposed, to agree, yeah. kind of leaves us on the outside. <laughs> the new merged district could literally say, okay, Woodbury, if you don't want to convey your buildings, fine. We'll just send the kids somewhere else. I know. It seems like they have the authority to do that. That's what I'm worried I'll, about. Yeah. I'll add to that also. At the committee's, uh, the articles committee meeting on the 27th, when we were uh, discussing this this complication over the property ownership and possible leasing of the mm -hmm. building to the um, to the new union district, um, I tried to make a case for leasing. Uh, I said there would be less time and resources that, that the new union district would need to expend in managing and um, maintaining the property um, and that the, the district itself would have some control over the negotiation sure. in the lease so we'd put, it, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't give them a property that they had to manage. It would give them a property that they could cooperatively manage with the board, so it would provide another check on the costs. So I tried to make a case for the advantages of having a lease, and two of the three representatives from Hardwick on the committee expressed their opinion that the voters of Hardwick may oppose um, enrolling students in a, in a property that was leased. They didn't um, seem like they didn't see that as being favorable, and um, Joanne um, <coughs> Joanne raised the point that there are a, a substantial amount of students in Hardwick who are homeschooled, so there's a vacancy in the Hardwick school oh, building. Definitely. So there's there are empty seats there, and I uh, this is this is only my opinion based on, on what I observed, is that the, the people in Hardwick might say, well, we don't, we don't own that building. We don't need to use, referring to Woodbury, sure. we don't need to use that building. We've got students, um, we've got potential here at our school. We're just going to bring the Woodbury kids into Hardwick and, and fill the seats and, and improve the school. I'm sure, it's through good intentions. But, again, it leaves Woodbury out and we've got a long tradition this school's over a hundred years old it's very well managed it's efficient in 2017 Woodbury within the entire OSSU had both the lowest budget the um, spending yeah. per pupil and the highest um, highest test scores the kneecap English sure. mm. so it's a high performing low cost school wouldn't it be great to continue educating kids here? So. so what they have to understand, too, is the sale of any municipal property has to include a public hearing. So we, as the select board, would have to call a public hearing and say, okay, here's a town asset that we've just come upon, and now this new forming school district wants to buy it for, from us for a dollar, you know. Would you be all right with that? And with all the encumbrances in place, though, that we need to would need to have right. to continue. And, and it sounds like so it, I'm afraid that, that it. Lakeview is also. I mean, Greensboro and Stannard are also in the same position. So will they close the Woodbury and Lakeview, and then have all the kids go to Hard? That's that's what would happen if this is completely unpredictable. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and it can't. They can't close any school for two years. Right. Um, 
if Except it's too if it's, <laughs> First it has to be conveyed. Well, a town school could not be closed unless the voters in the town approved. However, Lakeview, because they're a union school, they could be closed by a, an affirmative vote of the electorate. The it sure. puts them yeah. in a, a more oh, possibly position. more yeah, vulnerable very position. Situation, yeah. Yes, um, I'd like to add something here. Phoebe mentioned encumbrances, and I've, I've raised that before, before I was on the board, the potential of, um, this is pending the opinion and review of an attorney, but under Article 6, in the conveying of property, that the property would be conveyed for one dollar subject to encumbrances of record. I've been doing some research in that, and I'd like to explore this more fully tomorrow night with the board, but there's um, an example I found, I believe it was in the town of Westford. Um, I can look closely at my notes here after, but there is uh, a deed, an, in, uh, an encumbrance, uh, it's Can an you easement. Kind of define okay. That, okay. That yes. Term? Yes. I'm a okay. Fuzzy. Yeah. Okay. What is okay? I mean, what what is meant by encumbrances? Okay. Encumbrances. Mm -hmm. Easements. Okay. Covenants. Okay. Providing rights to a third party, um, uh, or an in, an encumbrance in, in the case of an easement you diminish the value of the land by providing an, an additional right or a restriction on the use of the land. Could an example be when we use it for town meeting? Yes. yes. When we use it for pickle emergency. Ball, pie breakfast? Emer yes. Emergency. These but certainly an emergency, emergency shelter, 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 yes. shelter yeah. is a legitimate, right. very legitimate. Mm -hmm. oh, for yeah. example, if, some, if there's a right in the deed that somebody's water line passes the property, right. that would be... I think we can put whatever we want in the lease. I think that's an, encumbrance to me is not a term of art as much as it's a general term that in, in, yeah, it sounds like a, something like uh, is, is intended to include a lot of the things that Stephen was just mentioning. I think it's a, none of us are attorneys. I don't think, um, and we should have our attorney ask what that means. But absolutely, I, I would be a hundred percent in favor of you know putting everything in there that we want to make sure that the, that the school is the building is protected for whatever use we want, including other, <laughs> you know, at some point you just stick that language in there. Um, so I think, I think we, that's where it takes us back to the lease, you know, or what, what are we calling this at this point? It's lease. I think we should call it a <laughs> just lease. A, that's a term of art. Lease. You know, everybody knows what that means. Um, now let's put the encumbrances in there, whatever it is we want, so. I, yeah, I found my paperwork here. It, it, the the, uh, the sample or the example I found was in the town of Westford. Westford included these uh, uses in the um, in the no, in the in the easement. It was a deed. So it um, let's see was uh, for use of the um, emerge that Westford would be used as an emergency shelter um, with use of their emergency generator, town meetings and elections, and use of fields, recreation fields and trails. So this provided an Sounds easement similar. for mutual yeah. use by the town and the school um, for use of that building. And the, it, it was of record, encumbrances of record. It was filed mm -hmm. with the... With the clerk, town clerk, and it, I believe that it uh, travels with the property, so it's... Um, I, I don't anticipate any issues with that if we were to convey the property. Uh, this, this in Section 2 here, it says the premise will be open and accessible to all Woodbury residents for social, recreational, educational, and community purposes, and shall serve as a resource for the town and organizations and residents of Woodbury. But we could flesh that out and, you know, put bulleted items under the <coughs> I think the library should be under there, the right top. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. Oh, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. 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 To Specific. me, that seems important. Yeah, I, think I need to be a, a, a right of way to access the town's wetland property, which is on the other side of the yes. school district's right. wetland property, if that doesn't end up being conveyed to the town. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we could get together and. Well, I think that's what we should be doing. We should specify yeah. the rights that the town 
would want to retain in the in the use of the building and the property. Yeah. Where did the expenses of that get flushed out? Easement. Well, that document it starts to address expenses, um, and it basically says instead of rent, uh, the school district will pay for maintenance, etc. And then it um, it talks about expenses that might be incurred by non-school right. uh, activities, and they would be paid for by somebody else. Right. And mm -hmm. it's it's a really good start. We just got to hone it down, you know, mm -hmm. fine tune it. I'd like to add one more one more point here. Um, it's possible, from my understanding, and again, we need to discuss this with an attorney, but it's possible that we could add as a covenant uh, 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 permitted use for the, for the building and the property and restricted use. So permitted use would be direct education of students in school-related <coughs> property. <coughs> Um, and not use of our building for purely administrative purposes. So it's possible that we could in, put in this easement, this deed, this covenant, um, specific use for our building. So if we did convey it to the union, after two years, the board would not be able to vote to relocate our students attending. It may not just be Woodbury students but relocate students to a different school and use our building for administer. Right. So it's right. possible that we could cover that in the covenant too. And um, it's, this is, we're given a bowl of lemons, this may be lemonade. That we may be able to, to work together here and come up with something that's better than, than what we're presented with in the Articles of Agreement? Well, it depends on if the Articles of Agreement can be amended. You know, from what I read or from what I hear, it's very difficult yeah. to do that. Yeah. Skip, uh, no, please. Because of the timing, right? Right. Yeah. You, you mentioned there were some points under Article 6 that were problematic for you. Yeah, we can get into that. Yeah. In, in okay, we more. can do that, and we can bring yeah. that to the we can bring that to the Articles Committee. These may be problematic for the other towns, too. We had agreement on the committee. Um, we addressed this Article 6. We struck Paragraph C. Um, these, this was all provisional, you know, subject to approval by our boards and then the voters. But if, if, there, are, if there are points in, under Article 6 that, that raise concerns yeah, for you... This is just, to me, it's just fraught with with errors, All right, well, especially 6B in the last paragraph, if the town elects not to acquire ownership of the building. We already have ownership of the building, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so it just it doesn't pertain to the town. We would ignore any other town mm -hmm. in the state of Vermont who are falling under these articles of agreement for other new union districts. Mm -hmm. So to me, that, that third paragraph, and at least our article, should be stricken. Because we so own the building. My feeling is that we have at least two things that have to happen sometime pretty soon. One is we have to, have, well, we're going to have our meeting tomorrow night. We'll see from the school board discussion and with the supervisor union leadership there, you know, what the latest is. And maybe, <coughs> maybe we get some direction on some of sure. this. But I, I think we're all in agreement that we need to finish up a lease okay. and get it signed as soon as possible, Correct. right? Absolutely. Um, I will just add to what Stephen suggested about encumbrances. Um, we can put anything we want in a lease between us, <laughs> right. but at some point that lease would then be with the merged Correct. union, and that's why I think it would be healthy to bring the supervisor union into some of this sooner rather than later, because at the last minute they could say, well, we're not signing off on that. You know what I mean? Yep. So we don't want to get into that tonight. I don't think you want to spend two more hours on this tonight. but. So those are the two things I think have to be done. And whatever happens on the meeting on the 21st between the two supervisory union committees that I mentioned will be really important also to give us some okay. direction. But we are running out of time. That's sure a problem. Are. Mm -hmm. The third piece of it, Patrick, too, that the real this decision that also needs to be made is if the town elects to convey the buildings and the property to the new unified district. 
It would have to be the, the voting town. It can't be the select board. No, no, it has yeah, to be a town meeting yeah, and everything. It would have to be the right. voters of Woodbury. Yeah. And so, what I heard was you saying you didn't think that was a good idea and Michael saying he thought it was. How do we... I, I guess, what well, the right statute thing. says we have to have a public hearing. So we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. So, and I'll tell you, my... my and I haven't even discussed this with our, my fellow board members yet, and it'll come up tomorrow night. Sure. But my feeling is, given the lay of the land as I see it and understand it, I think we probably should be prepared to convey the property to the new district with, you know, ironclad assurances yeah. that if, if the school closes or whatever, it all comes back the way we want it. And that's up for us to do. But that's, I'm just telling you ahead of time, my, my feeling is. I, I don't want to be, I mean, we have to safeguard our assets, our interests, but I don't want to be combative to create a sense of conflict right in the beginning where they'll just say, okay, the heck with the school and the kids, you know, they're going to Hardwick. I'd like to try to work something out with them and so maybe including them ahead of time. I mean, that's that sounds like a reasonable thing to do and if they're total whatevers, mm -hmm. um, then, then, you know, if there's a plan B, I guess. I have a question. Steve, did you ever, did the school board see the actual attorney's opinion, uh, this of OSSU's attorney, or did you just hear it filtered? No, the board hasn't seen it no. yet. Um, because it seemed to me like the, what I was, what I heard you say was a bunch of threats. They may not do this, they may not do that, they may not have to take our students. Right. I'd like to, right. I don't know where that, that. Well, I think that will come up tomorrow night as well, Diana, because um, there was some ex exchange, but it wasn't um, it wasn't shared uh, with the, with the with any board at this point. Mm -hmm. It's a little tricky in my mind because it's attorney um, uh, advice, and typically that's not. It, it depends on what it's about, but sometimes that doesn't. That's not public. Sure. Yeah. Um, and this kind of falls in sort of in between. But tomorrow night we'll be talking about that. We'll decide how to how to handle that because I think the board members deserve to see what um, the actual advice yeah, has been. It shouldn't just be someone else's opinion of what, uh, what they're right. 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 It's sticky, sticky business. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's never seen anything. Like uh, if I could ask a question about the amendment committee. Um, was there concern on the part of the Woodbury Board of giving four seats to one town and leaving three <coughs> seats for the other three towns? If I'm correct, that's what it would be. That's if you offered say, four yeah. seats to Hardwick yeah. and retained well, one Well, as you each. may remember, uh, if the default articles are in right. place, then it's two yeah. seats per town. Right. But was that proposed in exchange for leaving... But well, that's for the transitional board, was. right? Isn't that for the transitional board? Uh, the then? transitional board, <coughs> yes, but it's also for the initial board, mm -hmm. and uh, for one, for I think some period until it's changed. Basically, mm -hmm. that's the way the new board is constructed. Now, having said that, yes, there was a proposal to change it, which I'm now one bit surprised. At I'm in Hardwick. At your well, committee. actually, it would came from Greensboro. Uh, mm -hmm. or yeah, like Lake people. Good. Lake, you proposed it. I found that favorable, and that uh, that was still subject to discussion among our board. But you you found favorable because it was in exchange for some language around Closure. keeping Closure. schools open. Oh, yeah. So it was one of these negotiations. Yeah, that's what it was. But in my in my opinion, you know, just look at the population. You know, Hardwick has 2,800, you know, or more residents. We've got what 900. Give or take? That's 800. 800 in Greensboro, 200 in Standard. We have, I mean, if you just do the math, right. they should have four seats. And we should each have one. But. I, I guess I just want to express that I find that, I do find that somewhat alarming because then Woodbury, including the two other towns, would never have a say in the budget. We will always be outvoted. So you may end up with a school in your town, but maybe a school you no longer want well, exactly. because you can drive that out through the budget. And I just want to lay that out there as a very big word of warning. Yeah. That's a big thing to I, I really think the town should have equal equal number of reps, two two per town. Um, People in Harvard just use them. I know they do. Yeah. I know they do. But yeah. I mean, it's, that's like the difference between 
the House of Representatives and the Senate. I think yes. we should follow a Senate path. Yes. And, so, and it does not work that way on the Hazen board. There's not yeah, one well, town does more, not have a majority. Because the small towns are just going to get overridden yeah. every yeah. time. I mean, that's my anticipation. Um, I'm just, Let's just not lose sight that, like, you know, five, ten years down the line, the budget in the end is going to rule what kind of school well, we have. Well, my feeling, I, I completely agree with you. This is fraud. Start to finish with all kinds of difficult issues that it's going to be hard to get agreement on. Mm -hmm. Some of these things can only be, like the articles, changing the articles. That's done by the whole electorate. That's in the, that's in, that can't be changed. Mm -hmm. So... If somebody wants to change the voting, mm -hmm. it's going to be the whole electorate that votes on it, not us. And we'll have X amount, you know, how much sure. will we have to say about it. So it's just fraud, the whole thing. Here's something else to consider. We're talking about the composition on the board, representation from each town. After, on or after the dis, New Union District's annual meeting in 2020, um, the voters of the new Union District, most of whom are residents, voters from Hardwick, they could vote to amend these articles and reconfigure the board. Mm -hmm. So we're... If I'm not mistaken, once the new board is, con is constructed, they can vote to change the articles any time. The board can, Maybe not the elected the board. Well, the board proposes it, but the but electorate the, has to approve it. Right. But the board can choose to do that any once they're formed. Uh, in fact, that was, oh, I, I think, see, what we I were see. saying the other night was how we were going to deal with some of these issues was we don't have time now, but once the new board is formed, we would have an opportunity to re, mm -hmm. you know, redo the, uh, anyway. So that, so that the composition on the board could be reconfigured by the electorate. They could, they could, they I'm could willing amend the to articles. bet you that the yeah. people in hard work are going to insist that that be more representative or more proportional. Yeah. I've been saying this all oh, along. Yeah. If I'm in hard work, I don't get why <coughs> they should only have two votes and standard should have two. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. but Brett's also right. I mean, that's where all the power is going to be. Okay. So Anything else I can do for you tonight? So our to-dos are... Get the lease. Yeah. Okay, get it tight. So get those encumbrances in there. Get those encumbrances. Yeah. I'll send the emails mm -hmm. out to the select board and Diana and I'd like to make sure please don't include it on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well we wanna discuss it as I said tomorrow night and then we we can have a, a formal process or sure. agreement of maybe mm -hmm. a subcommittee just focus on that for a couple of weeks and get it done. Mm -hmm. Back and forth. I think as long right. as we agree on all that before mm -hmm. copied it should be all right. right get now. an attorney. Okay. If you need one. Well, I'm working Sounds on like that. Sounds like we need one. <coughs> working on it. Okay. And so, yeah. how do we feel about um, Patrick's suggestion that we start including um, the lawyers or the supervisory union just to be ears? We can there. send them a draft, I think, of the lease. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and keep them included. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's wise. That's to avoid the nasty surprises. Yeah. Now we already have Paul Gillies working for right. us. Yeah. Can the school board also use Paul Gillies? No, we should have a separate so. attorney. Should have separate. Yeah. Yeah. Probably <laughs> someone who does. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. Well, it would be really nice, but I think it's just potential conflict of interest. Sure, it would be. Yeah. I don't and think it will be. Yeah. I, I requested the, the board proposed changes to Article 6. So in the event that we do convey the school to the district and then on to the new union district that, that Article 6 squares with the interests of the town. So That's when you the, say the board, are you saying the select, select board? Select okay. board, yes. Yeah. Well, I hadn't even thought about that. I don't think the so idea is for the town to get convey the property yeah. to the right. school district. I right. think that we have a lease. And right. then when the time comes, we have the discussion about conveying it directly to the new sure. district. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Oh, from the... Yeah. Directly from the town. Huh. And would that time happen when the new union district becomes an entity formally, or would it happen after the two-year... No, it would actually happen. If it's going to happen, it would actually happen before June 30th. Okay. Or before July 1st. No it June wouldn't be 30th. part of that organizational meeting, yeah. though, would it? 
No. No, it wouldn't happen at the organizational meeting. No. It would happen separately, and as Skip says, you have to have a town meeting to right. approve that decision anyway. Mm -hmm. And then you start backing up all these states, yep. you know. And but yeah. <laughs> this raises a question here, because under Article 6, it says the forming districts shall convey to the new union district the property. Ah. Is, I don't see anything in here about the town doing that. Any other, any other owners conveying the That's property. That's why I think Article 6 is the just so fraught the with... Forming district and the new union district. district. The f forming district, th that in still, this, in our case, would be considered Woodbury School right, right. District. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but that's assuming, yeah, I hear what you're saying, yeah. you may be right, maybe we have no choice, but that's a, that's assuming that the, that the school district owns the building. Right. And since they don't, mm -hmm. I don't understand. Well, we'll yeah, find out. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a, but we need to have that question answered. Yeah. But yeah. If, the, if the voters of Woodbury agree that the town could convey or should convey the property to the new Union District, it's only, it would simply be passing through the school, the Woodbury yeah. School yeah. District. Yeah. It would be another transaction. Does the be, State Board know the confusion that they've created yeah. with <laughs> the yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, well, we have a member on it who certainly yes, knows. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've been chatting with Peter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. All right. We'll move forward. I'll CC everyone. All my emails. Bert, if you want to keep oh, that. Yes, may I keep that? Yes. Thank you. We're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like pizza yeah. and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Who pays for it? <laughs> the new forming district. <laughs> Good night, much. Thank you, Stephen. Good night. 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 Good yeah, library or in the school? In the school, you know, the little the room that in the basement where they have their meetings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a good long, kind of long. Okay, yeah. You go down the stairs and um, kind of go through, through as far as you can, and then to the left. left. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty, moving along. So, Smith still here. This like should, it this shouldn't take. This shouldn't take. <laughs> you set a trap for me, right? <laughs> Almost worked. I know. <laughs> What am I stepping on? <laughs> Got a question for you, Michael. Probably. Guardrails? Have you guys done any more since the last time no, we were on here? No, it's always sort of been on hold because money is getting spent in other places. Yeah. Okay. So and I, somewhere there was, uh, you know, like a survey or recommendation done. Um, which I have not been able to find anywhere. I don't know. On other places it should be guardrails? Yeah, other places that okay. were suggested for guardrails. Yeah, it's um, just kind of curious if you'd ever put any monies aside to no, continue we, that. No, we, um, I think we've kind of postponed guardrail things when we did the Nelson Pond Road culvert, and then, you know, there's just been, then the municipal road, general permit stuff started happening, so um, it's just been, and I can't find, you know, what was written, I contacted the Regional Planning Commission, VTrans, no one seems to know where it is. Perry knew where it was, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. Paul Gillian do some research. <laughs> so, back to our budget. Uh, there was a question regarding Ron Wells and... Uh, his listers pay right now, he, he's compensated at $15 an hour, and we thought that was low, and we were going to increase it. So I gave Ron a call and uh, talked to him about what he actually does here, and he's the only one really that enters any of the uh, information into Memric and to the, the listers application on my software. None of the other listers do that, so Ron and I had a discussion and uh, we agreed upon, Ron and I at least agreed upon a salary of $18 an hour. And I just wanted to run that by you if you thought that was fair. 
that works. Do we need it by motion or just all agree? I would say, since the meeting now, I'd like to make a motion to increase Ron's salary to $18 an hour. A second. All in favor? Aye. So how is he with his collector of delinquent taxes? He's fine with He's that. He's fine with that. Yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, good. Okay. So that about. being said, on page two. Very bottom? Yes. I would still keep it the same. Your inputs? Yeah, I mean, the others kind of love very minimal hours. Right. That's true, yeah. yeah. So I have 7,000. 7,000. For Lister. For Lister's? Yes. Do you want to increase that or do you want to keep it the same? Well, do we have any big coming up or not? Do you want to have any? All the PTTRs need to be done. PTTRs. Explain. Uh, property transfer tax. Okay. Is that something that Ron does? Yeah, you have to enter all those into the system. The new addresses, change those. Um, I'd increase that to $8,000 then if he has to do that. Because once it comes time for my tax bills, I go through the PTTRs and. Um, He's the only one that does this. Right, yeah. he would be the only one. Right. Yeah. That just gives us a little wiggle room in case sure, he yeah. gets some extra time in. Because he was about 5,800 last year. Uh, still waiting on personal public rescue to give us an amount. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something I was looking and still Sylvia Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Still I mentioned that Mary wanted yeah. to ask for more. Yeah. What is it presently for Sylvia Jackson? Yeah. It's five thousand. Uh, uh, that's my that's my memory. Mm -hmm. okay. So these are for your records. Thank you. Sylvia Jackson is at sixty one forty three. And she wants it higher because she's anticipating. Diana, do you have a second? Didn't we? Didn't we have a yearly appropriation into that fund? Or do we, I it mean, was a thousand. It was a thousand. Last year we Sylvia put. Sylvia Jackson. So is it the yearly appropriation that she wants to increase? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I told Mary she had to write it. I have a year. record town report. Yeah, is she, do you know if she's dollars. using it a lot more or something? Uh, or is there a reason why I she don't wants know. to bump it up? No, I don't, I don't think there have been that many requests. Huh. Is there a plan to serve a balance? Yeah, there is. Yeah, $6,100. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, last year in the book we had a Sylvia Jackson report, but it was only a little... Uh, right. I reminded her that she should submit something like that. I, I think if she wants more, that she should come Say to the select board and yeah. tell us why. To so keep it at a thousand. I think a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, until we start using it more or see the yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the government shuts down and people aren't getting their food stamps and stuff yes, like yeah. that. Yeah. You got any good stuff over there? <laughs> Uniforms. Okay. Uniforms, right? I have that. So, um, uh, uh, it's bad. It's in the highway budget. On eight. So, um, I met with the road crew, mostly the two Gregs, um, and um, they would like to get t shirts for everybody. Um, so it would be $500 is what I'm thinking that we should budget for uniforms. But, and then to keep the $350 uh, stipend for clothing. So this the uniforms would be in addition to the clothing stipend. So $1,200. Well, one question I had was, do we want to have a clothing stipend for the part-timers also? For uniforms, sure. For uniforms, yes. The five hundred dollars for the uniforms is for all four, uh, full time and part time. Um, 
Um, and I'm just wondering if you want a closing statement for the protest. Oh, kind of like a prorated stuff? Yeah, kind of a prorated thing. Like we're giving three. Oh, that'd be kind of tough. Yeah. yeah, I don't think. Yeah, so. until we. Okay. I, yeah. I, there's just a question that I had that I wanted to ask you guys about. Yeah. They do it for a full timer. It's just as a, as a nice benefit. But. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys. So, so then $500. Um, Plus the for, 700 so 1200 Yes. So they've got to wash these things, too. So Once in a while. No <laughs> employee deduct. Deduction contribution. No. no. That's, yeah. So that should be struck in. Struck in. Struck in. Struck in. Okay. Okay. That one's gone. Yes. Well, are you set for the wages for Peter and Tim? Do you, do you I calculated the new. Okay. Let's go back. Okay, so Peter is sixteen six. What page are we on? Oh, sorry, eight. eight, eight. Okay. Six. So for Peter, Peter sixteen thousand six hundred. That's twenty hours at his increase times fifty two. Yeah. So then we have Tim at seventeen seven, seventeen thousand seven hundred. Uh, Social so Security you, and yeah. Medicare, ten thousand. Pretty much the same then. Ten? Yes. Yeah. So when I look at Bob Fair and Dave Pike's wages, you know, it's just, it's kind of a wash, you know, from what we did in fiscal year 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and Dave Pike was making 15 and something per hour, I think. Mm -hmm. so, and Bob was making about what uh, Tim, Tim is now. Or we'll, we'll, we'll be making in the next fiscal year. So let's see. 1695, yeah. So uniforms. Um, so do we need to create, let's see, do we have um, a line item in the NEMRIC for, for the clothing reimbursement? I see we have one for it's uniforms. It's just uniforms. So should we make us uh, two separate they line items? They have a credit or? card for, um, they have a credit card. Okay. So what so we they've been doing, whether they order on Amazon, they order their clothing, use the the, his credit card and then okay. I deduct Adam. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, Greg Adams mentioned that, that he was able to buy some uniforms with that clothing reimbursement. Um, uh, he, they gave me a, the catalog that Unifirst or mm -hmm. Uni, so that'll, that'll work with their credit card. Is that how they would do that? With or I can use the town credit card. Okay. okay. All right. If so, they want me to place the order. I okay. placed the order last time. Okay. So uniforms should be $1,200. Okay, and that includes both. Okay. Hey, one question. Mm -hmm. if we can go back to page four. And account number 01-5-20-43, legal expense. Yeah, we've discussed 5,000. Yeah, I so. In light of what we just discussed with the school mm -hmm. boards, should we consider increasing that? You know, we may have spent that before we get to the fiscal year. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. Oops, sorry. That's all right. Because right now, you know, Paul's going to have true. to uh, look at the lease after right. the two boards yeah, get together. Yeah, more expenses. But right. that, it probably will be done this okay. week. And that was going over the bills today. Th um, just reminded um, the that was still ongoing. The Paul, yeah, the Paul Gillis thing. But should we label? I mean, it was labeled Jennifer Harmon, but really the bulk of that expense was for the uh, Paul's work with the lease. So should we label it, or at least have just have more than just her? I can. Name I there? can. Well, there's not much room, but I can right. try and split it. Because you know the. In that total bill of eight hundred and something dollars uh, for Jennifer, it was about eighty dollars, and for the school, the lease, yeah, the lease. it was seven hundred and seven dollars. Yeah. So, 
you can split those out. Yeah, somehow just to... There's no item line split out, but... Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you click on... Because it, it kind of infers, I mean, when anyone else looking at that who didn't look at the actual bill would think that we had to spend 800 more dollars on... Jennifer Harmon. Jennifer Harmon. That's not a good thing. All right. Just... Yeah. Or just change the wording over so that... Yeah, we could not on it. Just use the. Yeah, other. we could just use the school. Use the school lease. For it. I mean, the school lease. Oh. Yeah. I can't go back and edit the check. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's but going forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the okay. Written. Okay. Right in the memo. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Should we then increase the five thousand dollars for next year? Yeah, I would hope that we wouldn't have to, but I know. But um. Yeah, because we had a lot of legal. Last year, I mean, this is, is an unusual amount. Is there going to be more legal as far as the store? No. The school, you mean? No. The store is probably store. not. Maybe you have a small amount. Maybe, but that's a, that's all, that's all going to come from the grant, right? Yep. So well, we still have to do it up front. Yeah. So that'll be. We wash eventually. Yeah. But this would be just for, you know, fending off the new school district. And we may have to have another lease drawn up between the new mm -hmm. school district mm -hmm. or a bill of sale between the town and the new school district. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, five Yeah, well, how much is he? He charged us $700 for the... $140 an hour. Yeah, he charged us $700 for the draft of the mm -hmm. lease. And, um, boy, it's hard to see. We, how about we could bump it up another thousand? Okay, yeah. So I'm just looking, yeah. I'm just looking at our history here. Right. We in fiscal year 2018. Right, that's true. We have had two know, years of yeah, we over. Did. Yeah, maybe we should go even more. Yeah. Um, so being in the litigious society that we are in, perhaps it would be smart. It might be. We were going to suggest eight thousand because that's yeah that's, the, that's what I'm thinking now. I mean, if we don't spend it, that would be wonderful. But right. Because in you know fiscal year nineteen, we're going to spend. I mean, the the bill that we just got would be added to this now. Right. Yeah, so we're you know we're already up to nine thousand something. Yeah, we probably don't have an, any idea right now where our budget stands as far as are we up or down how much from last year? Or? For what, legal? No, for the oh, whole, for the whole budget. budget. I yeah. haven't, because I still have to uh, punch in some new, I haven't finished punching in numbers. Yeah. So I won't know until. Mm -hmm. So do we have all the numbers in now? We do now. We do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, the, that'll be interesting to see you know, how close we are to last year. And, uh, so we can we can do something like this, right? Here's the 01 5 10. Yeah. Payroll expenses. Yeah. So you go down here and total payroll expenses. We have budgeted this amount, and today yeah. it's that amount. Yeah. Well, that's what's good about Henry. Yeah. We can yeah. give you, you know, almost daily. Daily budget. Budget. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing that Greg um, mentioned um, is that he has made a couple calls about the tires for the grader. Um, he got a, um, an estimate, and this would be installing the tires, buying them and, and paying to have them put on. Um, from New England Tire, $8,500, and from Rouse, I think I pronounced that correctly, um, $7,800. So I wanted to just, I haven't really looked where that would go. Um, well, we have a we have a line item for tires, and um, that's going to be on next year's. Yeah. 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 Well, I thought we were doing that this year. Yeah. Since yeah, I mean, the, we, we probably would do it this year. So get the, it out of this year's budget. Yeah. What does the budget look like for this year? I don't know. Let's just get there and make sure we're okay with this. I meant to look at that before. Page eleven. Before we turn. So tires, um, you know, that would be tires for all the trucks. Um, and so far this year, you know, we've I think we've got tires. We're set for tires now for this fiscal year. So there's basically from what we budgeted, there's 
you know, forty-five hundred dollars, five thousand um, dollars, forty-eight. Let's call it forty-eight hundred dollars. So we're halfway there for, um, or more than half for what the greater tires would. And I don't know, what did we, do? we have a budget item for the greater? I mean, maybe the two of those split would cover the tires. Um, yeah, there is a certain amount that mm -hmm. we had budgeted for the greater. Um, well, this year we budgeted 7500 we've only spent $431. Okay, so. So between those two. Those two would cover the tires for this fiscal year. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have to add that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, th I think we're good, we're good for tires. Um, for this fiscal year, and then the, whatever new winter tires they would need for next year could be purchased after July 1st. Yeah. Um, and usually they are. That's right, July 1st. Because yeah. Greg got a new kind of tire that holds up better with the chains, and the plan is to, um, so he's taken a lot of tires off, but so there's a plan of switching back and using older tires for the summer and using up ones that are kind of beat up from the chains. Um, mm. So I was hoping that the tires will, will last a little bit longer. Um, okay. So I will, I guess, let Greg know that. Do you want to send me that? Send you what? That's what you were looking at. No, this one right here. That's spreadsheet? Mm, no, because I don't want to use that. Didn't oh, this is the tax rate one. Right, yeah. It just copies of the same thing. If you want, if you can send me this information, Mm -hmm. When like we're it, done, you yeah. can just plug it in the new one. I'll just plug it in. Or we can have our other Excel widths. So if we sell the 550 before next fiscal year, you know, there's our cushion. I'm all for We that. don't have to we, steal we, from we, I, I assume that we will sell it before the next fiscal year. I mean, Greg would really love to be able to use it for the rest of the winter, but fix it up in the spring. Um, we've, we've talked a little bit about trying to use the six-wheeler for the salting. Because mm -hmm. um, so it, it does really help time-wise for them to get out on the road plowing to have the salt in the 550. Um, you know, salt's in it now. So if we could fix up the 550 in the spring, um, get it looking nice. And but if that six-wheeler has a bad rear end, right. a leaky, leaky rear end case? Yeah, what's yeah. Should kind of fix that too. If we yeah. intend to keep that. Right. Is it noisy just because it keeps getting low and they have up and No, they they keep up. it up. It, uh, I think it, they're just thinking that the gears are you know starting to are pretty well worn. You know, it's starting to howl. Um, yeah. No. So. No. no, they're aware of the leak and definitely check it. Yeah. Pretty pretty regularly, but it's you know it's it, it's just making. Does a that lot mean of noise. more is going to need to go into the the dump? Um, I mean, dump truck. If they have to put a rear end in, that's good. No, that'll yes. be. Yeah. We only budgeted fifteen hundred. Yeah. yeah. That's probably going to need to be more if they need a rear end. Let, let, let me check. This fiscal year, or yeah. Yeah, let me check with Greg about that. I can. Yeah. I'll check. Um, that's on page ten. Okay. I'll give him a call about that. So let me write that down. Three. I'll circle that with a question mark. Truck three, six wheeler. Replace rear end. Because Greg will have a pretty good sense of... And that is looking. really, really our oldest. It is. Yeah. It doesn't owe us anything. Right. The place we're in cost. And then should we budget for fiscal year 20? Okay. All right. I'll call him tomorrow morning. I did increase uh, Greg's premium assistance yep. mm -hmm. after figuring out the numbers today. Um, 
I'll be cutting the check for $381.94 monthly. Mm -hmm. um, and then after taxes, only, it comes? Yep. It comes out to the 315 take home. Yep. Okay. Um, so I bump that up to 46. Okay. Greg wondered if could that be sent if we sent it directly to Blue Cross Blue Shield, would 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 taxes be taken out? If we sent it directly to his wife's insurance. I don't think we can do that. Okay, all right. I just a it was a question. I don't know if we could or not. What would that gain, Michael? It would gain we would be paying less per month. We would be paying like sixty something dollars less if we could pay the three hundred the three hundred fifty amount directly to Blue Cross Blue Shield rather than three hundred eighty one dollars, including taxes. Including tax, it would, and would then he the still gets to claim them. And that yeah. would be an accounting nightmare. Okay. Yeah. I, I. You know. It was just a question, and uh, it did seem kind of somewhat convoluted, but I'm trying to. I think it would be an accounting nightmare to do that because you would have to get some sort of an account set up in Blue Cross and Blue Shield and do the transfer. I wouldn't do a transfer. We just do checks, same for raises. Well, that's a, but, kind of a... But, um, but that's not even, you know, it's not even Greg Parker's account. Right. Health, health insurance accounts, his wife's, so... Yeah. It would be, it might be tricky. My Blue Cross Blue Shield might not want to do it either. Is it worth looking at? How much would you figure? Well, it would be $65 oh, right. a, a month. So time, that would be 600 That would be about $800. New uniforms. <laughs> yeah, if, it, if we could do it and it can save us 800 bucks, that's 800 bucks. But yeah. if it's not something. I mean, the should benefit be able, to Greg. So, does he pay a tax on that or anything? No, does it's that no, change anything? No. It's no benefit to him. I mean, we we have to make the amount he more. He was paying tax on him. He was paying tax on the one eighty five. Right. So he was getting even less. Well, in the end, that. he gets to claim that. I mean, it comes out in the taxes. Uh -huh. He still claims it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he would claim. But this way, yeah. when I'm not sure. Because during taxes, you have to claim the health insurance that you buy. See, I, I have to group? claim taxes on my Verizon retirement mm -hmm. on my health insurance. Mm -hmm. So that comes as a separate form that I have to pay taxes on because it's a benefit, <coughs> tax benefit. I mean, tax benefit. Craig's wife does the bookkeeping for Washington County Mental Health. We could ask her, would it be better that we, the town pay directly to your insurance, health insurance? I'd no? rather ask BLCT. Okay. And, and if it's an issue worth versus accounting, and then I'd put a call into NIMREC or, or even the state saying, is this going to be a conflict of interest? Is mm -hmm. it? Yeah, are we beating somebody by doing it? We yeah. shouldn't be. Right. Because we are, we're getting hit. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting we're paying taxes. taxes. If we could not pay taxes, that would be nice. But yeah, yeah, that would save us the thing with that. If we could it still have an item line, same as. Yeah, we, we still have it. It's an invoice. Yeah. Whether That's she true. submits it to us. We just go someplace else. Yeah, we're, yeah. Just, we're still paying it out. But sure. do, do you want to do the. Investigating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I think that's it. I think we're good. I'm going to plug in those numbers. Do you want me to bounce it to you digitally or do you want to pick up a hard copy? Digitally, please. That way, your ending numbers, you'll be able to see them right in front of you. Just lock into that. Forward it to me. I'm going to have to, um, since you're leaving me, um, download oh. that file, that chart, because um, I think it. It should be in the town report since this is not going to have it on it. So. so this will be in the town report. As is. Yeah. Any file from NIMR can be downloaded to a PDF. Nice. Yeah. But it's not. Once I plug in my numbers, it's going to be actual. Okay. It's not going to be a 10 month. 
unless I go back and plug them in, and that throws in another chance of error. So you have these plugged in tomorrow on the sheet? Or I no? have 85% of it plugged in right now. Yep. Okay. Yep. So there will be nothing to slap in the rest. Um, the, the kind of webinar thing that we subscribe to every year, are there webinars for dealing with um, spreadsheets and things like oh, that? Oh, yeah. There's Somebody a, better learn that. There's an Excel, another Excel that I've been wanting to go to attend. Or the, the, uh, the, X, the Excel Maven mm -hmm. is right there. Okay. And right here. Okay. So, yeah, I have attended the first one, the second level. It's an all day, it's in Williston. Yeah, is there a first, first level? Yeah, I already attended okay. that. Okay. Yeah, it's you, basic. I think it's, I would like to do that also. Yeah. Just to I'm available for consultations too. Okay. Because I'll be around. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Not a speed dial. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I hope, I hope I'll be around. Yeah, well, I don't see why I wouldn't. I already got your name on an apron. And yours also mm -hmm. is on your pie breakfast is coming up. Oh, a name on an apron. Oh, boy. I was going to say. <laughs> is that going to be my new job? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want my kitchen post. I'm lost without it. <laughs> what is pie breakfast? It is March 16th. Hi. March 16th. Good. Okay, well, all right. I think okay. we're done. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's 8.32. We're only a half hour late this time, which I suppose is okay. <laughs> Excuse me, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn the meeting at 8.32. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. All right.